Welcome! We're back! Are we loud enough? <laughs> yes, I had to reset everything. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, yes. your best source for the newest Atari 2600 games. That's right. And I'm back. Darcy's back. I We're am all back, back, too. And Atari's uh, back Atari's as well. Back. The fun is back. He was purring too loud. <laughs> he almost got in trouble. Purr, purr, purr. Don't you know we're on set? Yes, we are back after a month away. It's been a long time. I've missed the show. I've missed you guys. Welcome back to everybody. Um, thank you for joining us uh, after us being away for so long. I didn't know if anybody was going to come back. For They're all like, ah, who subscribed? Dan AVC. Oh, Dan, how? That needs to be on time. Dan and Nathan, how long was the delay between when you resubscribed <laughs> and when this event uh, happened? Because <laughs> Darcy subscribed. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Thrust 26. It's now following. What is going on? Where's the cat? Where's the little cat? Wiggling his tail. It's supposed to be wiggling his tail. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no audio on this end? Slacker oh, cat. there's audio here. Can you guys hear? Hear us? Hello? 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 Check, check, check. I'm sure they can. We will hear me more of that. Jam checks now falling. Where's the kitty? I put an animated kitty there. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's is it too low? Mind. On the screen? Is the kitty off the screen? No, I put it on top of everything now. Anyway, we'll fix that. Oh, people have audio. Okay. Um, so welcome back to Zero Page Homebrew. Welcome back to us. The people are saying... Oh, we can't wait to see the new studio. The, the studio wasn't being redone. <laughs> it was a walk-in closet in the bedroom, which you won't get to see. But what you do get to see is the new carpet in the cat cam, which probably doesn't look much different to everyone yeah, else. I, I'm looking at the cat cam, and I can confirm it looks no different than before <laughs> we had from kind the of perspective a, of the cat cam. Because we had a kind of a brownish gray before. But it was all very thin, and it was like very, very... Hey, thank you everybody for resubscribing. There's so many people. Such strong support. Level 1 completed. It said, you've received a level 1 hype train emote. Which is like a little chest of gold and an arrow up. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> no new studio. No, there's no new studio. Um, so... If you're having audio issues or video issues, just restart. Um, there's a bit of a connection issue, but it's not too bad. Um, so, we got so much to go over today. I better get into it, and we can talk about little, little things in the meantime. Um, but we're going to be playing four games today. First of which is Pit Cat. Meow. Uh, this is a 2020 exclusive final version of Pitcat, and you haven't played Pitcat, so that's good. Um, this is by Marco Johannes, or Johannes, Johannes, Marco J, and Difed Hitchings, Jam Tex, of which one of them is in. There's Jam Tex right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be taking a look at the final uh, version of this. And uh, uh, then we're going to be playing Shadow Reflex, which is a brand new game as well. And Chalk and Duster, another brand new game. It's 2600. And we're going to be trying for the patch on Astronomer. I've tried to get that once before. And I've played it a number of times as well. Um, it is hard. And there's a bunch of luck involved too. So good luck to us for that. Us. I, need to get, <laughs> I need to get 20 points. And I've only gotten 11 in Astronomer. Um, and there's somebody who's got 59 points, I think, or 69 points, something. We'll get to that. Uh, so I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers, of which there are more now who need to be added to that list. Um, but the ones that were subscribed before the show, Al Nefer, Arms Car Coder, Captain Classic, Catalox, Charles and Check, Coconut 81, Glenn Main, Johnny WC23, Carl G., Croco 2600, Mark Space Inc., Metal Atari 1969, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Pack Rat VG, Quahog 2600, RC7E, Repentless VG, Ricardo Pim, Spitty B, 7800, Socrates 0603, Estimers 2008, The Welshman 89, Thunkist, and Tiki, Dan K. The list is a little bit shorter because we were off the air. People and weren't getting reminded. And several people that uh, have subscribed. Uh, yes. Carl G. subscribed. 
I can go through this. Dan AVC. So pretend your names are on the list. Nathan Strum. They are on the list. MCP90, not on the scrolling list beside you. Uh, uh, Packer Pac FEG, Captain Pac Classic, Classic, Drexel. Yes, you somewhere. Subscribed. It's, it, Pentless VG. I did it. It told oh, me I was it. successful. No I think you were, uh, announcement. Are you already on the list? No, I don't know. Just didn't announce you. Very disappointing. I hope that doesn't happen to anyone else. <laughs> I know how it hurts. <laughs> the pain. Like your name <laughs> didn't even show up there. Or alert. Yeah, it's, it's weird. strange. Weird. So you can support... Maybe it sense that I was subscribing from inside the house. Inside the room. He's coming from inside the <laughs> studio. Uh, you can support the show and subscribe for free and get your name on the list and get us to read it out. If you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime and click subscribe, and make sure you follow, like, uh, subscribe and click like on all the things so you know when we're coming back or when big shows are coming or announcements and things like that. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Metal Atari 1969, Nutty 03, Marco Johannes, RC70, Carl G., Jam Tex, uh, X Ken X 70, uh, Pack Rat VG, Captain Classic, Repentless VG, Nathan Strum, MCP 90, whose game we're going to be playing as well, Shadow Reflex. It's the second game we're going to be playing. Al Nefer, Danny VC, Smitty B 7800, who else? Thrust 26, um, Anybody else I miss? Oh, they all look like repeats. All repeats. Yes. Okay. Oh, Leo C. Santi is here as well. And Nutty03, I think I said. Uh, oh, and Cafe Man 2D just subscribed. Thank you very much, Cafe Man 2D. The list will be much longer next episode. Much yeah. longer. So right now it's like kind of doubling up on the screen. So you can see your name twice <laughs> sometimes, uh. <laughs> which I was wondering how it was going to handle a short list. Uh. I wonder if how it handles one person. Does it just do one person space, one person space, one person space all the way down? Maybe. Uh, we've got a poll question. So we did renovations here. So that means I had to pack, we had to pack up the whole lower floor. Which is not much. It's this office and, be <laughs> it's and the bedroom. It's gigantic. It's two rooms. <laughs> and, and a hallway. It's, it's two rooms. But we had to pack up everything. But there was a lot of stuff in those two rooms. Uh, everything that was on the floor. Someone I know has a lot of stuff in those two rooms. Mostly video games. <laughs> which brings us to the poll question. Because uh, I had to pack it all up. Anything that was on the floor, which includes a huge bookcase full of miscellaneous and games and tubs full of games and other tubs full of games that are under the bed as well. Um, I came to the realization I may have too many video games. What? And consoles. But I want Sorry, to qualify a, that. You're going to... Huh? Yeah? What? Huh? Brains leaking out? I don't know. <laughs> is, there, is that the same James in there? I've that... been replaced <laughs> by an alien. I want to qualify that. Too many games for the space I have. Ah, uh, yes, yes. If yes. I had a bigger space, I'd buy many, many more with mm -hmm. arcade cabinets, etc., etc. So You could buy a nice, affordable <laughs> house in Port Alberni on the island. Mm. And you would have all the room that you ever need for any of your games. Sounds great. Yeah. Maybe I could just ship them off to your house rather than sell them. You could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Ground Trooper, for resubscribing. 24 months. Oh, my God. We've been on the air that long. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. The problem, yes. yes, the house is the problem, not the video it's games. It's not the house that's the problem. It's the neighbors. Why are they there? Why and is why their won't space they... not your space? Why won't they give me their house? <laughs> that's right. And there was a house... Uh, next door to this uh, townhouse complex that was for sale, kind of run down, but uh, it was a mere what two million, three million? No, I think it was one million. <gasps> one uh, million. But it, like it's a standalone house. No, one point five. Anyway, there's no, no, <laughs> oh, only only only, one only off by fifty. We're in plus Van or minus fifty percent. We're in Vancouver, which is BC, which is the one of the most expensive places in the world for houses. Um, relative to income. Actually, it's probably the most expensive. Um, and there's one up the street for 2.4, and it's gorgeous. Oh, my God, I'd love it. 2.4 million. I That's have seen several houses that cost 2.4 million that I would love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, In my neighborhood on the island, for 2.4 million, you can get 
a beautiful waterfront house that's on an island, that's probably genuinely like a you know like a million dollar house, like it's like you know yeah, what you think of as a million dollar with house. a dock, maybe not a dock, boat but, included, but waterfront. No, <laughs> no. sometimes <laughs> dinghy. Does a kayak Blew count up. as a boat? Yeah, boat included. Yeah, <laughs> toothpick um, boat. <laughs> so I'm actually on the fence about getting rid of some of my games. Because it's mostly the games. The consoles, mm -hmm. uh, I have some duplicates, so I can get rid of some duplicates. So I'm like, uh, obviously I'm not going to get rid of any Atari 2600 games. Uh, maybe Genesis games, because I don't really play them that much. Um, so I have to kind of decide what to get rid of and which consoles and things like that. Start throwing away furniture. Well, some of the furniture holds the games or hides the games That's underneath the yes. <laughs> Yeah, the furniture. You can't throw away the furniture. You'd have nowhere to put the games. <laughs> and actually, I've taken over one of the bookcases upstairs and filled that with games now. So I'm like, Ugh, and I have to pack it all up. So I'm packing all these games. It's like just tubs of it, just tubs and tubs. It's crazy. Um, you but need, I, what you could do, though, is you could borrow some tricks from a uh, tiny house movement and yes. turn every spare, spare square inch into storage like this couch i don't believe all, this couch stores more stores bed so it's it's actually pretty efficient that way but it is a bed which is rarely used because we have a bed fold out bed upstairs as well so you could turn this into a couch of games like mm -hmm. make a couch out of the games <laughs> or make a clear pl a plexiglass you know couch with cushions on on it and you can see the games under uh, through it mm -hmm. maybe but i know i'd i'd regret it instantly after, getting rid after of getting rid of the games like oh why did i get rid of the games because you hear that all the time about people that get rid of games or their systems then they buy them later again yeah. for double the price <laughs> so i'm like why would i get rid of the games it's not playing uh, mega drive games i know i don't play them as much as atari games or nes games or snes games yeah there's no um kitchen uh yeah there's no uh attic yeah there's no there's attic no there's no it's, it's townhouse crawl and space there's like an apartment above yeah and there's not really room like we just made a walk-in closet but that's going to be instantly filled with stuff that we already had that was filling up the bedroom so the poll <laughs> is what about your video games collection is it too big is it too small is it just right or let's start this up start the poll boom did that work I don't oh know. there it is what is the size of your video game collection too big time to sell some off uh or number two not big enough more three just right i'm done collecting or four i only play binaries through emulators or sd cards so you don't have you have like one system or you have an emulator and you have no cartridges whatsoever Right now, I'm going to put one because I have way too many. And I don't want to sell them. So I'm not going to do that till everything's put back in place. And I can take stock because things are still being moved back into place. I doubt anybody's going to put four. Because I think they're all, they all have something. And they all have like systems or cartridges or things like that. Surprisingly, a number of ones. I thought everybody would be like, no, always need more, more um some threes in there too and i'm in the process of selling a lot of it off i actually messaged somebody the other day about buying more stuff <laughs> it's terrible i'm at that point i get a game here or there and homebrews yeah um so most of my games are in storage in another country hey i could do that i could ship them off to another country they've got room in other countries don't they yeah <laughs> Not as much as we have here, for the most part. We got a lot of room. We got a lot of room. We're yeah. the second biggest country in the world, by landmass. Yeah, and right? if you go by how much space per person, we got to be doing pretty good that way too. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Probably Russia and China would be like rivaling for space per person. China does not have a lot of space per person. Oh, that's true. They've got the biggest amount of space. China's the biggest. No, Isn't Russia it? is definitely the biggest. Oh, uh, is it? I remember there was I a short period of time down. where Canadians were like. We're the biggest when the Soviet Union broke apart. <laughs> oh, did they join back some more stuff? No, they just never... They, they, oh. It's just that Russia is the biggest. <laughs> no need for additional uh, countries to make it. Oh, that, okay. That's uh, that the case, yeah. They're easily the biggest. Okay. Yeah, they're It's huge. not even Look close. Map. Yeah, it's, it's not even it's, close. It's like Asia. They're all of the northern part of Asia. 
all of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and China's <laughs> big. Europe. China's a big country. It's just that they have lots of people. So on the, yeah. uh, you know... Lots of permafrost. Yeah, same here. You have to chip it away. to, But it's melting. So there's going to be a lot of variable space soon. It'll slowly <laughs> going up north. It's terrible. <laughs> Not good. We don't want it. We'll hug the border and stay warm against the U.S. <laughs> Um, we've got some amazing shows coming up, like mind blowing. And some of them I can't even tell you about yet because they're mystery, super secret ones. Um, but the ones I can tell you about on November 27th, we have a spotlight on John Champo slash champ games, where we'll be having the wor exclusive world debut of the newest champ games homebrew port of Gorf arcade. So you definitely want to tune in for that. Get your questions ready for John Shampo. I'll be putting up a thread in the Atari Age forums. Yeah, sorry about the... Oh, the video is bad today. Bad, bad, bad. 22% loss. Terrible. Um, I can drop down the video a bit. That might help. I'd rather have good video or constant video than choppy constant bad video than constant choppy good video, video than yeah. choppy good video yeah. yeah sound is perfect okay i'm dropping it down to 1 megabit per second so hopefully most of the stuff on the screen doesn't move we're playing atari games not full screen ps4 games so should still be okay um so yeah november 27th it's friday uh make sure you tune in for that i will keep reminding you um forever till the 27th on the, of that one uh the next show on tuesday we're having the exclusive final release of leonardo santiago's game unholy which we played a couple times before on the show but this will be the full version of it um his original click collection was the biggest yes michael thomas thomason yes uh, uh, we're also going to be doing a Halloween show, which is a Friday, which is your day. Um, and we're going to see about doing it at 6 p.m. I don't know how we feel about that with costumes. You have to get yeah, a costume too. Have to figure something out. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, so we're looking for Halloween homebrew. It could be hacks as well, because it's not a lot of Halloween homebrew made. So I've already scheduled, um, a hack that has never been seen before so that's a world debut of that one as well so if you have any uh suggestions for hacks you can message me in the atari age forums or on the facebook page as well um oh thank you dan for adding the game spotlight to the abc calendar uh, oh, yes. Hey, last time I remember, I ve with details very exaggerated, may or not be made up, Darcy had an injured arm from a beatdown received from James via combat. Yes, it was a trouncing. No. <laughs> We're both beating each other separately in combat, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yes. Because we were both lagged. Yeah. Because of the way the game was made. Yeah, we were, were each winning. <laughs> but, it's but the best my, way. I don't believe my screen was being transmitted just like my face or something. Right. It was my screen being so transmitted. You, so you see. all thought I was lying, but really I was <laughs> winning on my side too. Yes. Yeah. We're both winning. Everyone's a winner. Blue ribbons for everyone. Yeah. Um, and we have a very special secret event coming up in the next few weeks that you're all going to really enjoy. And also a world debut of a super secret game as well. I can't talk about either of them at the moment, um, but I just want to hype you up for something you have no idea about. <laughs> Get hyped. Um, one of them, you, your mind is going to explode. Okay? Explode. It's you, like, not literally, so, but figuratively okay. all over hey, the room. Yeah. Hey, that's ceiling bad. covered in goo. <laughs> dripping back down. And you're still going to be excited, even though your head is gone. Like, lit, like so, you're going to be... Like, I can't uh, exaggerate it more. Uh, it's it's going to be unbelievable. Um, yeah, such a tease. So, on to uh, the third annual Atari Homebrew Awards, which is coming up. Not soon, but soon. <laughs> <laughs> soon for me, because I have to arrange it. it Not going, soon for yeah, you yeah. guys, because you just have to sit there and wait. 
But we can start talking about it because I have ordered. So this is the first year, mm -hmm. 2018 awards. Can you see that? Not really. How is it over Darcy's shirt? Not great. How is it over here? A little bit better. Okay, 2018 awards. Um, that was the first year we did them. Then we did the 2019 awards. And I'm not calling it the 2020 awards because it's kind of weird doing the 2020 awards in 2021. I always thought that was a bit weird. So I look to other award shows like the Oscars and they say the 67th Oscar Awards or, or Academy Awards. So I've changed it to the third annual Atari Homebrew Awards. Hmm. And there's a there's three now. You can start numbering them because it's kind of a presumptuous when you start with the first annual Atari Homebrew Awards. You're like, yeah, we're going to do this for years and years. So I've kind of proved it out. <laughs> you know, you know. Otherwise, you survive COVID-19. <laughs> Very true. We don't we don't do it in person. Well, we're yeah. in person, but yeah. it's it's far away. And the people accepting are far away, too. Yeah. So we it, it are works actually fine. beside each other. It's the magic of television. It's, and it's a great green screen. And even I can do this. See see the technology? We can even put our arms into oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. See whoa. how good it is? Yeah, yeah the <laughs> VR. We're actually VR um, caricatures. Yeah. And it senses bumping yeah. in VR. Oh, my God. Look at that. It's <laughs> it's crazy. So the, <laughs> the trophies have arrived. This is my trophy for putting on the show. Ah. See, it says zero page homebrew. <laughs> because <laughs> i want a trophy to keep if i give them all away i have nothing left <laughs> so That's pretty great this one has some residue on it oh my god i wiped it I off i've ruined it i've ruined it now it's a, a little uh, bit clean oh it's and clean. now yeah. now you're you're gonna have a little bit dirty a little so, bit clean third annual atari homebrew award celebrating the best in atari homebrew given to zero page homebrew for putting on the third annual Atari <laughs> Homebrew Awards, <laughs> celebrating the best in Atari Homebrew. <laughs> well deserved, if I must say so myself. I accept this award on behalf of myself, and I'll give it to myself. <laughs> the best variety show. Um, so we've added three new categories. We're expanding uh, the awards. Um, so the list of categories are, drum roll, with two fingers uh the the first one is the best atari 2600 original homebrew now that may give you a hint of what the next award is because it used to be best atari it's 2600 homebrew not original homebrew um so the next new award is best atari 2600 homebrew port yes there we go cool split for port for port to original because I thought it would be, uh, it's like when they do screenplay, best original screenplay and best yep. adapted screenplay. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think there's a bit of carryover when somebody makes a port in terms of people's of course. nostalgia yeah, yeah. factor yeah. and familiarity. And they're like, oh, I love this game in the 80s. So there's a bit of carryover from that. And I find it kind of interferes with other people making new games and kind of it shines a bit of a spotlight on the ports too much so why not separate them out and there's enough ports being made in the 2600 realm that i can make a separate award for it um so the second award is best atari 2600 homebrew port thank you very much sued suinator suinators for following Hey, welcome. Um, and the third award is Best Atari 2600 Original Under 4K Homebrew, which we've had before. Just adding original to them. Should should ports from console and ports from arcade, ports from anything, any port from anything, could even be from a 7800. How about from a 2600? Is that a port? Uh, Yeah. If you're just like like re, re, uh, redoing, it? redoing it, yeah. I mean, has that happened? Uh yeah, it actually has. Because there's there like was Pac-Man, I guess. Yeah, there's like Pac-Man that would, but that that's mm, not really because Pac-Man's from the arcade. It would have to be a port right, right. 
of a game that only. Was original. Yeah. Oh, has that happened? That's a good question. Because I'm thinking of, oh yeah, that's been already released on the 2600. Yeah. Like, um, Berserk was redone. Um, Pac-Man's redone. Donkey Kong's been redone. All the big, big, big names. Um, but uh, I doubt there's been a that's, game I mean, that's, that's a goal. Been... That's a goal to aim for. Make a game that is such an amazing concept, <laughs> but that you totally po- you pooched it enough <laughs> That someone else wants to redo your game <laughs> on the same system. <laughs> That's very true because who wants to make a ter a, a remake a terrible game? It would have to be a good concept, but a terrible man implementation of the good concept. Captain Classic, yes, it's very hard to come up with an original title, so it's it's good to give an award to those things. It's also hard to co- copy the gameplay of another title on a different system. Yep. See Pac-Man twenty six hundred from Atari. Yeah, they absolutely yeah. had a terrible time doing that. They they corrected it with Miss Pac-Man. Different skills and does a al- original even does allow originals even playing field with no nostalgia factor. And doing the show, doing the award show twice, like two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen. The ports kind of took a lot of the awards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought, you know, it's not giving enough credit to the original. So why not? But, it... but you also don't want to take away from the oh, ports. No. They're, ports they are, are amazing. They're not illegitimate or anything. Oh, There's nothing oh. wrong with them. It's just, mm-hmm. It just is a different category. It's really... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because there's tons of work that have to go into it. They have to... Because the 2600 is a very strange beast in terms of how it draws on the screen. So you have to do a lot. You have to do the sound, the graphics adapting everything try and figure out how the original game worked it's very very hard but it's also very hard coming up with the original title i mean unless they use even partially the original source code you can't really call the ports but remakes yeah there's a distinction i still i would still call it a port even if they use the same code even if because they're using even the if same you're graphics. right <laughs> even if you're right is that it's a remake not a port yeah it's still it gets because, the message across of what you're trying to say. Yeah, it, those would be lumped together. Pitfall was originally on the 2600, so other versions were ports from the 2600. Yeah, that's very true. But nobody has come up with... Um, I was wondering if Penalt would count as original with its Ultima nostalgia. Well, it's not Ultima. I mean, in its form right now, it's a lot of Ultima. <laughs> but he's redoing a lot of it. And it doesn't use the same code base, doesn't use the same graphics, doesn't use the same sound. And it doesn't use the same story either. It doesn't use the same story. So none of it's porting yeah. it. It's just... They have a knock to run the bell. So. I thought I heard a knocking. Did you? You wanna... Of course I was talking, so my voice in my head is louder than in his head. <laughs> Through his ears. Uh, oh, somebody did deliver something. Uh, oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, reading out the list. Um, best Atari 2600 original graphics. Best Atari 2600 original music and sound. These are all the same. Best Atari 2600 packaging. Uh, best Atari 2600 original work in progress. Is it for me? No. No, it's not. Boo. It's for Tanya. I think it is for me. What did I order? Oh, I know what I ordered. It's tangentially related to the show. <laughs> Can you open it up, but don't turn it around? It's, there's a tear. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I didn't even see it. <laughs> it is a USB 3 hub, I believe. Ooh. Because I have a lot of individual usb cables coming from this area over to here and i just it's a very nice hub and you can turn them on on and off individually each port Uh. because i've read that if you have a port on it causes trouble if nothing's plugged into it oh and a little charging thing at the end very very cool yay so the charging thing is so the usb3 are 500 or like like these half an amp these are data and that's just power. So, because these are going to be 500 milliamps. Uh, because that's what USB is supposed to be. And this 
was probably higher. Oh, okay, yes. This is like 2.5, maybe or, yeah. 2 or right. something. Yeah. It's a very nice hub. I like it. I have one. It says it's USB 3, but it didn't work. So we'll see if this one works. Uh, and another new added one, best Atari 2600 work in progress port. Because I didn't want to leave out the ports that are in progress. And there was enough that are being worked on as well. Um, so those are two out of the three added ones. Does have a supplement me DC jack for power? Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, I definitely got a powered one because these would not work yeah, properly. You yeah, you'd only be able to, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not enough power. <laughs> not enough power. Because <laughs> your computer's only... In putting theory, only putting and then 500 milliliters, <laughs> milli milliamps, milliamps, milliamps. In Canada, yeah. it's milliliters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need more because there's lots of them and yeah. it just wouldn't be enough. Uh, and then we have the best 7800 homebrew. And there's only two completed 7800 homebrew games right now. I'm hoping and expecting there's going to be some, some completed ones by the end of the year because there's... 24 works in progress for 7800 but only two completed and that's why we added another uh award best atari 7800 work in progress um so that's a new one as well because there's a lot of work being done in the realm of 7800 right now it's picked up like crazy uh, it's it's really really great and uh like last year best atari 8-bit slash 5200 homebrew um, and as last year as well, Lifetime Achievement Award, which is voted on by the nomination committee, not by you plebs. <laughs> <laughs> all, all you guys vote on all the rest, but not the, not the Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, so the dates for that, uh, the voting starts in January, about a week in on January. Um, and then we'll be playing through all the nominated games. Um, and then does it start in January? Sometime in there. And then February, about the first week of February is the broadcast of the Atari Awards. Um, the dates aren't hundred percent set yet, but that's the realm that they will be in. Yes. Some 7,800, uh, developers in the chat today. So they're very excited, <laughs> especially about the works in progress because there's a, a lot of works in progress. Like I said, 24. Uh, and 7800 should get more crazy with 3 to 4 SD cards in development. And I've got a news story about that as well. So I got, I was all excited because I got a 4K webcam, an HDR 4K webcam that was going to replace that um, HD one up there. And it is really, really nice picture, especially with the HDR because the brights are brought down and the blacks are raised up so everything's really really good and it has great focus and everything mm -hmm. but i plugged it in and it has an issue with obs it oh. doesn't work well with obs and i think that might be because it just doesn't understand what this is outputting or the 4k is giving problems hmm. um but i just it would cut out the 2600 it would cut and out it was going to replace which camera um, the cat cam. Okay, that's not that important. If, it's if it not. replaced this one, it would be important. But there's there's some things coming up that could be this could be useful for. Mm -hmm. Like I would detach it from there, go full screen on this, yeah. and then we could like zoom in on things and yeah, look yeah. on details of things. Because uh, I would put an extension on this. So I had some ulterior motives. So hopefully I can find a solution that will work. But if not, that one's still fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It'll work just fine. But that one is really, really nice. So I was really hoping. What? Will I keep notes to record audio? No. <laughs> Do not listen in on me. Oh, what is happening here? Stop Nobody it. Knows. Nobody knows. Do as you're told, tablet. <laughs> That's right. Um, Omega Matrix posted some really amazing text demos that we're going to take a look at. One that displays 1,008 characters on the screen. And one that displays 576 like text characters on the screen that moves and changes colors. So we're going to load that up right now. When are the plans for an 8-bit XEGS stream? Ready. Maybe for the nominees for Best 8-Bit Atari Awards? Well, we're definitely going to be playing that on the XEGS. 
Um, so definitely at that point. Um, probably then, but maybe before that. Maybe I'll take some suggestions of the best 8-bit homebrews to play. And we'll do that. Uh, sorry I missed the news at the top of the show. We're still doing news. We're still in it. It's okay. <laughs> you, it's okay. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of news. We've been off for a month. More than a month. Lots of time. Uh, we're not doing PitCat yet, but I'll just leave that up. Um, there we go. Oh, let's switch over. Now, I'm just going to warn you that... Which one is this? Is that the right one? My system has some issues with timing. Color timing and timing. And we saw that with Omega Matrix's menu with Indy 500. One of the things, uh, the little white line in the flags was off by a little bit. So these are not going to behave properly. <laughs> mm. It's my system, not Omega Matrix's uh, thing that we're going to look at here. Uh, here we go. So this is a thousand characters. Actually, it's fine right now. Mm. It's going to go bad. <laughs> it's going to go bad. <laughs> wow. Which is just amazing. Yeah. Um, it may be a little crazy for you guys out there because we had to drop the bit rate down. But it might be okay. Because this has to do 60 frames a second going back and forth. And that's a lot of data for you know, it to compress and change. But uh, look at all that. Imagine using that for a text adventure. Like, it's huge. Yeah. I love the edge cases the TI were still being found. Yeah. <laughs> well, this one, because it has an art, it's behaving. That's, that's great. But it w I was like readying people for terribleness. <laughs> the first two columns were going nuts. When uh, Probably when it warms up, it's going to do some craziness. But... Yeah, imagine this with um, a text adventure. Like, you could do a totally proper one and not have to fudge it or do lots of wraparounds and stuff. Yeah. And you'd have tons of menu options in the bottom. Um, and I believe you can scroll it, too, by doing the left difficulty. Look at that. It's incredible. <laughs> um, I haven't looked into how he does it whether he has to do um, self, what is it called? Self-altering code, where you have to basically put, like when you're, look, I'm gonna turn that off, it's probably very distracting. Um, when you wanna, normally when you put something on the screen, you have to go read it from another place in memory, go, mm -hmm. I wanna load an A, go get the graphics for the A, um, put it into the accumulator mm -hmm. and then display it on the screen. Self-modifying code, what it does is instead of retrieving it, it actually programs it in that spot. So instead of loading from memory location blah, it alters the code and puts blah right there. So it doesn't need to load it. It just stores it. But you have to alter the code outside of the um, the drawing loop, right? You have to go load up all these store locations and then just go choo -choo 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 -choo. because the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Oh, I saw some glitches. Um, in real time, displays things on the screen as it draws, so it needs to do it really, 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 really fast. So it has to. So if you're going and retrieving all the graphics all the time, that takes time every single time you want to display something. Yeah. So instead, it just goes draw, 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 draw. Yeah. Self-modifying code. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> Three people. <laughs> That's impressive. Yes, this, the character ROM, the VCS never had. Yeah, that would have been real. Oh, now it's going nuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the aliens are invading. Yeah. Don't. Just ignore that. That's a display issue. It's it, it was is, nice it, and smooth before that was happening, though. Oh, uh, yeah. But it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a display issue. It's not actually what it's recording. Well, you know, man. So uh, this is really cool. Let's take a look at the next one, which is a lower resolution, 
Uh, it's not that one. Uh, I think it's that one. No, it's this one. Fixed. Because somebody found it. So this one introduces colors. One color per line. Um, and you can move with the joystick. And darken it. And brighten it. Mm -hmm. Ah, too bright! <laughs> and scroll it with the joystick. So I'm assuming by... You know, being able to move this around and change the colors and all this, that there's enough time to display whatever you want on the screen. Whatever characters, you can do a text adventure. So it's also legible over the stream. Yeah, this is, that's what people are saying. This would be better for like CRTs as well. The other one is maybe too tiny to read. Um, and this one is definitely more legible for the stream. It's yeah, it's a very very nice uh, font set as well, and the the letters are probably better too. You have to kind of fudge it. Yeah, it looks really good over the stream. Hey, that's great. So I'm uh, expecting within six months, get to it, everybody out there, start making the best text adventures ever. Because <laughs> like right now, there's only two text adventures for the 2600, and we played them right. Uh, yep. Lord of the Rings. Yep. Which was a very very condensed. First book That's of right, Lord very, of the Rings. It's like boom, 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 and Sadder. win. Yeah, yeah. Tongue in cheek kind of thing. Yeah. And the other one was. Uh, What's it called? Can't remember. That one was pretty good. I remember it was, was a dog. Yeah, there was a dog. There was a troll. There's some stuff. You can entirely <laughs> fail. You can reach a point where you can't complete it, but don't know. And you don't die. At this, you, yeah. yeah there's you no don't. indication that you can't complete it. Dark Mage. <laughs> Dark Mage. Yes, and that's a really, really good one. So it's got the classic in the pack rat. That would be actually would be awesome if somebody made a text adventure maker where you could have like this, have this yeah. the this code to to put the stuff on the screen and the code, the logic code for input and output, like the choices for menu north, yeah, south, yeah. east, west. And then like a kind of like a basic version T like Batari Basic, but tailored for text adventures. Yeah, that'd like be it, amazing. It just, like the the game is the game, and then you just decide whether a space is accessible. Yeah, and what's in it. Yeah, what's in it? Accessible. How to connect? What 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 is north? What you is you even just have a grid, and you decide which of those are nothing, which of those are something. Yeah, empty or not. They're either like you either put something in them and they exist, or you don't put something in them and they don't exist. Yep. And, and trout then, is in square ten. So like you have, you just fill in the text that's that you fill in all the things that are there, including the items. Yep. And then the other, yeah. I mean, the rest of it's actually really hard. <laughs> like what? What? How <laughs> things affect other things, but there's been. Yeah, text but, adventure makers yeah. before so you could look to those to see how that works but you, but you could make it uh you could make it that like oh nathan strum said the exact same thing <laughs> it would be great if somebody could build a framework for non-programmers to work with the created text adventures yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. great minds think alike yeah um, but you could have it so that it's like you have the trigger and the trigger needs an item. Yes. And then the trigger can do various things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like create new item, open a thing, open a path, like anything, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I'm sure that's how those creators uh, worked. Those yeah. uh, game creators worked. Yeah. Anyway, that's 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 this. And I, I thought it would be really, really cool to show this on the screen. He said, I made a few 36 character demos a while back. One of them was an interlaced 36 character demo, which is good for CRTs. I've since made a couple of demos for the display. One is a 1,008 character demo, perhaps the first time for over 1,000 characters on a 2600. I'm sure it is. And the second is a 576 character demo, which is taller digits. On my LED TV, they don't look good. They look awesome on this. <laughs> but it depends on your system and how you're getting yeah, it yeah. all translated. Um, but if you have a CRT, they might look okay. Toggle the left difficulty switch to scroll the letters. I wonder if it works on this too. Yeah, because that's manual. Manual scrolling. Um, then he posted this one. I uh, made another demo. For this one, I fixed the auto detection to be at the top of the kernel. Uh, in this demo, you can scroll up and down to adjust the brightness. Affects the flicker. Uh, left and right will dis uh, scroll the display. I've also included the code, which is not optimized at all. So he's actually... Um, giving away this code 
so people can use it. I know it can be heavily optimized, but this is just demo. Oh, so it can go even faster. It's great. And maybe we can just ignore those first two columns <laughs> for glitched systems like, <laughs> like mine, and then it'll be perfect. <laughs> Does it look better or worse? It looks fine. Brighter and darker. I mean, those practically darker almost gets very disappear. dark. Yeah, some of them are. But it's still there. It's so which, cool that it, you can do that, though. Yeah. It's really, really, really cool. And that's a good thing about the 2600 colors. colors yeah. um, the way the 2600 colors work is it has color and intensity. Like literally what you're seeing here mm. is the value grid, um, which translates to kind of different colors like dark green. And that's one of the best things about the 2600 is its colors. It's so good. 120 colors. It's very pretty. Yeah, the colors. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, that's it for that. Um, and like somebody mentioned earlier, uh, Batari posted about his Concerto cart, which is the SD cart for the 7800. It says Concerto will be ready soon. This is on the October 5th. A run of boards is on the way. While these boards are on the way to me, I'm wrapping up things in firmware. It'll be available in limited numbers at first so that I can manage the release and don't have a large backlog. Hopefully I'll be able to get one of those uh, early carts um, so I can test on 7800 on stream. Uh, the con Concertino isn't ready yet, and that's the scaled down version of the Concerto. So it'll be cheaper, but won't have the compatibility that the Concerto has. As development is put on hold until the release of Concerto, so I have time to focus on it. So that makes sense to release the big expensive one that does everything because that's what I think most people will want or at least a lot of the people that are going to be testing it and playing around with it 128 for NTSC 104 for PAL and 8 for poor CCAM those poor CCAM people <laughs> not many CCAM locations I think was it France that had CCAM I can't remember it's terrible oh nice the 7800 SD card is a must have for me must have for a lot of people because there was one put out a long time ago and hardly anybody has it. Um, oh, Thrust finally got the stream running. Yeah, Thrust is in Europe, so it's big jump over there. Um, okay, we're off to the first game finally. Yay! <laughs> Only 45 minutes. <laughs> there you go. So we're going to be playing Pit Cat. This is the exclusive world debut Ready. of the final version of pit cat so thank you very much marco j and jam tex oh I didn't hear that but you will hear that so pit cat yee uh revision 2 18 hey quit your clicking revision 2 2018 through 2020 mash d games france russia oh not too many then Poor France. Cat's here to represent. Phaser Cat Games. Hello, Phaser Cat. Um, so this was, this is a brand new build. This is from today. Uh, this was first posted July 23rd, 2018. It's a 16K E7 game. This is their only 2600 game that they've made. I think this is their only, their first ever video game they've made, <laughs> which is amazing because this is quite astounding. You can download a version of this game in the Atari Age forums. I believe this one will be put out there because I believe they're giving away this game for free, like binary, full version of the game, <laughs> because it is a port of another game, which actually we're going to look at.
the same music. Um, Cat Trap, known as Pitman in Japan, is a puzzle <coughs> platform video game originally developed for the Sharp MZ700 computer in 1985 and released for the Nintendo Game Boy in 1990. Uh, the Game Boy version was released on the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console <coughs> in October 2011. Destructoid credits the game with using a time rewind mechanic before games like Blink's Pr Prince of Persia and Braid. So this is probably one of the early games that has a rewind feature which are used in quite a, quite a few games now because it's really really cool oh they're stuck see they're rewinding back up uh the word cat trap refers to the frequent number of times the player is trapped as you just saw and needs to reverse their movements and the two anthropomorphic cats mu the player must maneuver to advance through the levels so in this level you only see there's one audio is back sorry about that game audio is too high there we go. Lots of audio now. So this was on the <coughs> Game Boy, and they have done an astounding job of translating this to the 2600, which you will see in a second. Let's just stop that. And go back to 2600. And... There we go. So we have the players. You can choose between... No, don't press the button. We're not done yet. <laughs> uh, so you can choose between two different players. Don't press the button. Don't, don't you guys press the button. <laughs> so you can pick between the two players. There you go. And if you go down, um, you can pick a level. Uh, you can play from the beginning. Or you can pick a level. Don't do that. Um, or you can input a code because you can output a code if you've been playing. And last time we played, we got to level 31. So the next one's level 32 and I do have a code. So if you can go to input code, uh, it's four five. Look at those little nice touches of graying and then going to full. Just gorgeous. Ah, uh, sorry. V C C C. Looks better on the 2600. Oh. Okay, yeah. It's it's really really nice. It, it plays. I mean, we played it on the show before, which was almost a perfect version of it. He has now gotten rid of a lot of the screen jumping, all of it, as far as I can tell. Now we want one more C, and then GG. Oh, it's nice. It keeps the last letter. Yeah. Oh. And button should work. Perfect. And it returns right back to where. Um, we left it off. I think this will be using Atari Vox for saving things, but I'm not sure because it does have these codes. Um, so if anybody wants to jump to level 32. Actually, if you go to select, look at that beautiful scroll. Oh, did we skip some? Why is it blanking out? Oh, did we jump? Go up. Oh, we skipped some levels. Well, we're going to start on level 17 then. <laughs> Why? Because we didn't do level 17. It shows. We started, we jumped oh, you to did 30. did 30 and 31? Yeah, we did do 30 and 31. <clears throat> oh, I can't hear. Oh, that's because we hear it here. Can you jump? Uh, no. What you can do is you can push boulders. Um, and you can, what your goal is, is to touch those guys in, in a, and, yeah, and you can get rid of that dirt. Oh, we jumped to, le uh, jump levels to show off the two player mode. Right, right. So, yep, there you go. You're actually kicking them, which disintegrates them. How do I push the boulder? Oh, I see. Yeah, get beside it. So, 
In this version, uh, we'll show off this, uh, this option in a little bit. Uh, it, they've added a speedrun mode, accessible by holding select when the game power is on. So what the speedrun mode does is starts a timer. You can see the timer there. And it continues the timer. So how do you go back in time? Uh, button. Oh, no, it's not the button. Is it? Don't move. Just press the button. No? Uh, I think it's game select. Yeah. You tell me when. I guess when you can get back up that way. Um, what speedrun does is it starts you at level one and continues the timer because you can see hours. Obviously you shouldn't be spending hours on one level, um, but the timer runs continuously or the, or the player two button. Oh, I don't have any. That didn't work. I've plugged into the Atari box. We'll use the, well, maybe we won't use game reset. <laughs> I'll go get another joystick. That will be much more convenient than getting up. Uh, getting up is torturous. Video so you choppy again. Jump. Sorry, everybody. I don't know why the Twitch servers are not behaving from here. The connection is absolutely perfect. Um, let me just actually check out the connection. See if that statement is true. Because it's been perfect. For weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Ever since it wasn't perfect and it got fixed. This is going to make it choppy. <laughs> Not for you and YouTube land. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. So that's uh, down or up? That's down. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was having trouble with down before. Um, when I'll take this opportunity to switch out the controls so we can do the rewind easily. Sorry, Atari Box. I don't think any of the games today use our target box, though. So. Ugh! Upload's terrible! But we are uploading. But it shouldn't be using that much uploading. Point. So one megabit per second. Why is it when I stream it goes to crap? Is that one megabit per second that isn't being used by Twitch? Um, <laughs> well, I have 15. Total. And Twitch is using one. So there should be 14 left. Yeah. Give or take. Um, which doesn't work out like that. But not one left. That, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, look. Look at these results. 16, 15, 16, 13, 9 even. 16, 16, 16. Totally fine. Until today, of course. Choppy good sound. Sorry, everyone. I'll have to deal with it. Like, it's... Good for the most part. Yeah. Okay, so this should rewind? Yeah. Okay, good. So if you want to rewind, it's B. I'll continue on reading. Um, sorry about the video. I will do more tests later. Figure out what's the problem. It's possible, not probable, that the lights are interfering with it. That doesn't make any sense. It's possible. Like, Turn the lights off and see. <laughs> We're going to go dark here. We're going dark. We can go yellow. <laughs> Actually, that's nothing comparative. But it gives us something. Ooh. Ooh, Halloween-y. Early Halloween. That's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> Um, now it's definitely going to go choppy because I'm testing it out again. But Darcy can continue playing. I don't know. I don't actually know what I'm supposed to do. Well, uh, you have to kind of... I know, like, I can get the two boulders over. I think you're good. Yeah, so walk over to the left. Keep walking to the left. Yeah. Left, left, left. Okay, now push. Now go to the left. Push that down. Uh, go down to the bottom. Now push that over to the... Nope. Wrong way. Nope. Wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way. 
other side of it. Go to the left. Push that over to the right. Oh. No. Just can't get back up the ladder. Uh... No. Like, I think what I need... Here, oh, I, I okay, just a sec. I, okay, just a sec. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Push that rock! <laughs> Jam Texas. So... Oh, uh, and then you can go back. Yeah, you're fine there. The question so is, you don't have to do anything with that rock. I get across here. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. That's where I thought I. Nah, Darcy had it. Yep. Other way. <laughs> Six minutes. So in this mode, it goes back to this menu. Oh, and the, you, and I forgot pick... we we're on uh, level 17. It yeah. wasn't like insanely hard, but it wasn't first level difficulty. Oh, first level is like <laughs> you can't not do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I was like, I was like, why, why am I having to try? <laughs> that's what was going through my head, and now I remember why. The new carpet. You can see the new carpet in the cat cam. No, that didn't help. The lights going out did not help. So we're turning the lights back on. <laughs> spooky mode disabled. Oh Ooh, no, spooky! Oh, that's just the light from the laptop. That's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Nice and bright. Okay, next level. Cats have deserted us. Uh, okay, continuing on with... Um, so this is... This game, actually, the name comes from the North American... Or the English version of the game and the Japanese version of the game. Uh, the English version was Cat Trap. In Japan, it was Pit Man. So this is Pit Cat. <laughs> um, so they've uh, addition addition of the message indicating mirror mode has been activated shown during the ready screen so you can set this game to flip all of the mazes so you can run through the whole game again but playing it backwards i think you can are those deadly i think you have to get those right and i think you can get rid of the no, that didn't work. Do so you have to land on them? Let me just try something. Oh, you have to kick them from the side. Yeah. Uh, elimination of the roll on screen transitions and password function. So there's no more screen jumping. It's all very, very clean. Emily... Elimination of roll during play and rewind. It would occasionally occur in some situations. So everything's super stable now. The screen. I really want this on cart with box. Now I believe they are selling the box uh, and the manual. No. And giving away the game... But I think you can get the game made yourself because they're allowing you to make the game, to, to put the game yourself on cartridge. And I think that is going to be available through Atari Age. So you can order it yourself with permission of the author through Atari Age, but Atari Age is not selling the game. It's a distinction. <laughs> Fix improperly moving into menu options when up and down is held whilst pressing fire. Hmm. Fix animation cutting out if the fire button is pressed during a turn. Fix garbage on screen for one frame when entering level select screen. So, uh, we have a very nice write-up about the history of the making of this game. Um, from Jamtex, I believe. Who is Marco. These guys fly. Have to kick them from the side. Yes. Oh, you'll be able to get that one. Nice. Both of them. Nice. Oh, they fly. Yeah. Hover. So, the story of Pitcat. Some of us who grew up with Nintendo Game Boy might remember the Japanese puzzle game Pitman. I think we're loud enough. Check, 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 yeah. check, check, check. <laughs> A.K.H. Cat Trap in the USA. The game was originally invented by Yatu 
Yutaka Isokawa on the Sharp MZ700, later ported to Nintendo Game Boy. My friend had the game included in one of those 31-in-1 multi-carts. The game struck me as being special as it required more thinking than manual dexterity and quick reflexes. See label on the left of screen. Yep. Good cat. I wonder if I can show off the label. No, I don't want to turn off the game cards. I'm turn off the chat. Chat, chat, chat. So tiny over there. There we go. There, there's the label. Get to see it for a second. Very, very nice label. Boom. I wonder if AA dares to create carts, even personal ones. Also, does a label exist? Yes, it does. Uh, video is bad, but take could be com me computer or connection too. It is bad here. It also may be bad there. It's just the I don't know why our upstream is being very, very naughty. Yep, stop complaining about the video's choppy. It's this end here. For some reason, today, I, I literally tested two days ago, and the connection was absolutely perfect. And today the upstream is bad. Why? Why does it curse me? So annoying. The only solution is to unplug the modem. And I don't know if I want to do that because it cuts us out for like five minutes. Okay, everybody vote. If there's five people that vote, yes, we unplug the modem. It may not fix it. We will unplug the modem. Just say unplug and I will unplug the modem. We need five people to say that. Um, it can't handle the awesomeness of PitCat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if it's if you don't want us to unplug the modem because it'll just it'll it'll literally stop the show for five minutes. I mean, Darcy will just keep playing, but <laughs> for the for the people watching on the on YouTube, can you be throttled by RSP? Possible, but if I was being throttled through Twitch the speed test would still show good if they're being sneaky throttling seems to be working better all i needed to do is threaten it is it a shared connection it yeah it's shared everything's shared at a certain point um but normally i have 15 megabits per second upload today i have two apparently looks fine on my end but my glasses are like coke bottles <laughs> Okay, no, everybody's like, no, no, it's fine now. It's fine now, never mind, never mind. Oh. Okay, continue on with the story. It allowed the player to complete the levels as at their own pace. I'm going to try to cut my glasses. And didn't impose time limits, although one could possibly race themselves against the timer if they wished. They had a rewind feature to take back a turn when a mistake was made. It also allowed the levels to be completed in any order. The later levels became challenging, especially those requiring of two players. It also had more than 99 levels. Wow. A password system allowed the game to be finished over multiple sittings. Fast forward 28 years. The game had still uh, had still la left a lasting impression, and I wanted to remake it for the Atari 2600. The hmm. based games weren't common. Tile-based games weren't yeah. common for the 2600. Not many. There are some. But one title did strike me as being representative of possibility, a tech demo. Video Chess, made in 1979, has a provision to show an 8x8 grid, which this has 8x8, plus some more at the bottom. Because uh, you can, if you can do one thing on one line, you can do it on every line. Uh, of arbitrary placed colored pictures and Venetian style, blind style. The interlacing of the style screen drawing is necessary to allow enough CPU time to change the sprite color and data between writes. A trade-off of quality for complexity. Pitman needed at least eight tiles vertically. If you analyze the video chess kernel, it can be seen that the game pro processes each line of, piece of pieces separately when drawing them. There are a few lines between the start of the game board and the actual drawing of the chess piece where the kernel organizes eight indirectly referenced addresses for sourcing the drawing data of eight pieces. This is efficient and elegant and uses little RAM at the expense of the vacant, vacant screen space. It works well for chess. And you can see here, there's lots of processing time on the left and right on screen as well. Pitcat, however, needed to be dis 
to display the game tiles with a full graphic without any processing lines and couldn't afford 64 different indirect zero page RAM lookups, a equal to a, a whole 128 bytes. A different strategy was required. In the end, the Venetian blinds method was recycled. However, the indirect load indexed instructions were replaced with absolute load indexed instructions. Adding absolute addressing, addressing provides no flexibility to change the address after compile time, unless it is code that is run in RAM and is modified by an operating system. With this method, each row of eight tiles turns out to be 128 bytes of code. The kernel is loaded into RAM eight times to make eight rows, which used 1,024 bytes. So he is using self-modifying code in this game that we were talking about before. This allows an 8x8 tile map with the ability to show 8x7 pixel tiles from any memory ad space addresses without with any of the Atari available colors. Then came the ability to update the absolute addresses. Oh no, he's not using, is he? I don't know. Or maybe he's writing it at a different time. I gotta put on these glasses. I'll just hold this away for me. Oh, people are saying well done, Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> any news about James own game? No, unfortunately. I have been very busy with this uh, construction around the house, but uh, there is a bunch of free time for me coming up, I think. Um, shouldn't be too bad in the next little while, so maybe I'll sneak it in just before the awards and totally fail to get nominated because <laughs> it won't be anywhere near close to be read, being ready by Christmas, that's for sure. I don't even know I'd, if I'd be able to release a, a working demo by Christmas. Anyway, it's it's a it's a long process. Um, then came the ability uh, ability to update the absolute addresses and colors in the screen RAM. Uh, the power of the E7 scheme was the allowed the flexibility to load absolute address tile from both ROM plus one of the 256 byte RAMs that could be pasted into the memory space. Having RAM based tile data allowed the data to be modified on the fly without updating the screen, providing an animation ability and the ability to load tiles into RAM from other banks. So it is self-modifying, not code, but it's it's not self-modifying code at all. He's just placing things in RAM and absolute addresses, um, but it's putting the things in RAM every screen. Um, any news about James' own game? Oh, we already read that. Um, the system to update the screen would end up taking four frames to completely update the screen and utilize both V-blank and overscan cycles for processing time. Uh, the game will keep track of the top left tile that was displayed on the screen for horizontal scrolling. So with the screen display possible, then it was possible to pursue the recreating the game. This would consist of several elements, dumping and compiling the 99 levels. Um, so these are the actual levels from the original game. Uh, recreating the game's logic, adapting the graphics, rearranging the original music, sound effects, and the rewind function, of which the music is incredible. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. Great uh, translation to the 2600 of the music. Finally, another ROM using E3. After my elite demo, ooh, chat to video takes ages. <laughs> yeah, well, from Europe, yeah, and the delay, and everything, terrible, terrible. Um, it's it is probably buffered to maximum because of all the drops as well. Sorry, it's misbehaving today. At least YouTube will be fine, thankfully. Um, thankfully, I didn't. I, I remembered to record locally. It's been a couple times I forgot to record locally. Thankfully, those episodes were fine. Uh, da, 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 recreating the original password system. That was probably the hardest. An initial alpha video of the game was posted on the Atari 2600 Homebrew uh, game, uh, Games Group page mid-2018. Some great support was seen at this time and development continued. It was at this time Jamtex offered to lend his help in working on the game. In particular, the game Manual. He's also a longtime fan of the game's Sharp MZ700 original form in the mid-80s and later on the Game Boy. Game Boy. Jamtex would also become the lead playtester and overall producer of the game. Dumping of the original levels was simple. 
using the NO dollar sign GBA emulator. Nas? Not familiar with that one. Or how to pronounce it. When the level was loaded, dumping a certain number of bytes from a portion of, in RAM occurred. All the levels were dumped into tile text tiles and then imported into Excel using macros. Thankfully, the total number of tile variations was under 15, so a hex, nibble, representation of each tile could be possible. This would initially allow packing into a packed byte with two nibbles. The number of changing tiles per map would be 12 times 8, or 96 tiles. With hex representation, this would be 48 bytes total. Initially, the levels would take up 4,752 bytes, or approximately 2.3 times 2k banks. This is approximately 30% of the game ROM. So quite a bit was the 99 levels, which is not surprising. Both cats have their own themes. Oh, so we're hearing one of the two themes of the game. I think I knew that, but we played it a long time ago. I think it was half a year ago. Uh, this was initially a good enough size. Later on, with the need for more space, the size of levels could be reduced to 33 bytes per level instead of 48. This was achieved by an additional level of bit packing by reducing symbol sizes to three bit bits instead of four. Three bits allowed eight symbols, as nicely incorporated the blank space, the ladder, walking enemy, rock, soil, concrete, ghost, and player one starting position tiles. A ninth symbol was needed, so the second player position was still required on some levels. This was end up being referenced from a lookup table. In, in real terms of savings, for every eight characters... Tough level. For my brain. <laughs> some of these are very challenging. Uh, could be represented for the price of only six. Oh my god. This is a, a lot of detail. Maybe I'll get out of the... Um, hopefully they post this in the forums, because this is going to be very, very interesting for programmers. And it is interesting for me, but I am probably born to death as half the people watching. <laughs> so I'll get to the more of the uh, touchy-feely stuff. Um, or I'll, I'll summarize. One of the wonderful, amazing tasks was recreating uh, the original music using the TIA tracker. Uh, the Game Boy version music was originally composed by Japanese composer Masayo Asakawa. The original music used three music channels, which Atari has only two. Thankfully, the music score used one of the music channels with similar notes to create flanging and echo effects, not for creating uh, the original. Restart game this part. level. Restart? Yeah. Okay. I think. Yep. There you go. Just too far, too far into it to rewind. Um, so you use the TIA tracker, which it did an amazing job of recreating the music. It is, tonality is great on it. Yeah, I don't think it changed much. Uh, let's see, the graphic representation had to be toned down, yep. But the characters look great. I don't know what that guy... Oh. Uh, the original had 16 by 16, uh, four shades per graphic. The Atari could barely display 8 by 7. Uh, level detail needed to be reduced. But they're great, especially with the animations. They look really, really good. It says, kick the rock on the left. I'm guessing he means the one on top, because you can't kick that one. Or I guess you could, can. after you get rid of him. Yeah. Um, you do need to get up to the skull, so at some point maybe you need to fill in that space there. Yep. There's a lot of rocks on the left. Uh, next is a rewind function. This gives the player the ability to take back turns. Actually, the uh, game logic was relatively straightforward. Pit cat represented uh, each tile's a bite. Does, that does solve it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm going to get... The, I, I was like, but if I do that, I'll be trapped in there. But you don't have to worry about being trapped at the end. What, what does the button do in this? Does it do anything? I don't know. But my hand is on it. Just you, in case. You'd think Just it in would case be, I need it. You'd think it would be used for the rewind function. Oh, I know. When you have two players on the screen, it switches back and forth. You do need it. Yeah, so you can't switch what the rewind function does and you hardly need the rewind function like you don't need it like the switching so. does um hmm. the basis this rewind function i'm talking about the game has 256 bytes available for rewind ram 
For turns where the player falls or lacks right, so large stack here. of the game, same tile fall, the game applies no. a formula oh, to check if the ch tiles have changed or remain the same during the complete turn. This helps save valuable rewind space. Very cool. Some more details to that. Uh, the game needed a way to keep track of which levels have been completed. 99 level bits were needed, so roughly 13 bytes. The game alternates between using level completions so. in packed 13 byte form and a larger 99 byte expanded form. Oh, wow, yeah, because it keeps track of which levels you've completed and which you haven't. You can't pull them or anything. You can hold it. Them oh, hold it, and you can scroll the screen left and right. Oh, that's super handy. That's handy, yeah. Um. Password system. This was by far the most challenging exercise. The goal is to recreate the password system t exactly verbatim matching Pitman on the Game Boy. So you can use the codes that people have already discovered and posted online and use them in this game, which is super handy. The password in either game can be usable on either system. To achieve that, the BGB Game Boy emulator was employed to dump the Z80 password code from the Game Boy game. The individual routines and extents ah. of the code were analyzed and printed. Then I manually converted the code to 6502 compatible code. The challenge in converting between Z80 and 6502 is that the more powerful Z80 uses a number of accumulator registers and the 6502 only has one. Or at least the Atari only has one. So emulating the registers on the 6502 zero page RAM was necessary. Yeah. Each line of code, instruction by instructions, was translated to equivalent no. 6502 instruction or phrase of instructions. No. So rather than f understanding the code, you did a straight translate. Interesting. Initial re results were way off when trying various test passwords. The best kind of debugging strategy involved running BGB and Stella emulation there of two go. versions in the game parallel and step instructions by instruction to find where the result and bug Thanks existed. Thanks for the hint. Wow. <laughs> the nice full color manual explains everything. We lost about 10 to 15 viewers since the beginning of the stream. Well, that's due to the crappy stream being cutting out for sure. Um, almost 100% actually. Which sucks. It's actually stable now, isn't it? Looks really stable. Let me see. 701. I'm trying to remember that. Let's see if it goes up. Yeah, it's green, green, green. Has it been stable now for everyone out there? Because it looks like it's been stable. Might have been a, just a temporary thing. Choose the cat girl! They want. They want. Did you just start this? Yeah. yeah. Choose the cat girl so we can hear the other tune. See, I thought it looked like Cat Girl too, but in the video you showed us, I thought they both looked like girls, so I... Oh. <laughs> so here's the other tune. Better than before. Okay, good. Yeah, it hasn't increased, so it's much more stable. Okay, good. So she doesn't have any different powers, so it's exactly the same. Just different uh, character and color. Uh, do, do, do. Shoutouts to the BGB's author, which I've failed to find mention of. Only, can only guess he, she wants to be anonymous. The, there are two completely different operations, password in and password out. These are... Oh, oh. there's a ladder over there. Sometimes. Oh, I printed this upside down. Uh, roughly inverse of each other, but are implemented by completely separate code bases. One of the other differences between Z80 and 6502 is handling of the carry bit and its meaning in branches. Oh boy. In many cases, this need to be inverse logic compared to Z80. In defense of 6502, some operations on the Z80, which required large 16-bit additions, were easy enough to do on the 6502 with only a few indexed 8-bit operations. Poll is closed. Oh good, stable video. So it was only temporary, which unfortunately was at the beginning of the stream. Curse you gods! Actually, the gods cursed us, didn't they? Didn't they? Well, you can curse them back. <laughs> uh, password system was initially so hard to complete that the whole PitCat project was shelved for eight months with no work done. This was mainly due to no ROM space being left. It was only when the 33-byte level bit packing technique was implemented did the project take off again. I can turn up our volume a bit more. 
Uh, it was this compression that saved Pitcat from development hell and allowed it to be finished. Most, if, if not all, the polish of the game come from Jamtech's thorough testing and suggestions. He created the game's manual and box. Prolific artist uh, Shramhel Decker was later, later enlisted to create a ma the manga art included in the manual. Seems like it would be easier to rewrite the code than to be translated pro across processors. You would think so, but you also have to understand how the code's made first. It might be an... Yeah, it might be easier to kind of retranslate backwards into pseudocode and then re-implement, but I'm sure they thought of that because that's the thing they got stuck on. But who knows? Um, the game premiered on the Zero Page Homebrew Show in July 2020. The game did run, but exhibited a system overload type symptom from several minutes of play. But that was because of the system, not the game. Or it could be a combination of the two. But it was like the, it was the only system that, that it exhibited that on. But that is now in the hands of Batari. That system. Who is taking a look at it. And checking it out. See if it's like a common thing. Or why it's doing it. It's very edge case. Sadly, that's, that's what happened. Um, from the review, the Stellar emulator was used instead. Yeah, for the review. So... So far, the same overload effect is reported on one other user system, so it was not um, was not unique to just that one. Uh, the root cause yet to be completely understood. The game was released after the show. It was reported by Atari H Forum community in general that the screen roll on transitions were pretty bad. There were developer there were also developer mode uh, issues reported by Omega Matrix. Uh, developer mode in Stella is very handy. Take that back, you. To address this, an improved version was released a week later. Apart from Jamtex, Keebs, James, at Zero Page Homebrew, and Andrew Davey did a QA on the game. They would report that the screen roll was still noticeable, especially in the menus. The R1 release came out a week after the release. It was a stopgap measure to keep things rolling. Now, several months later, the second patch, which we're playing right now, is being released and which addresses a widespread concern of screen roll. Why is the bottom color flickering? Bottom row flickering colors. Oh, he was rewinding. That's yeah. why. Yeah. So when it rewinds, it flickers a different color, so you know that you're not playing. It's actually going back. I was like, oh my god, something's going wrong with the 2600. No flickering colors, please. Um, the story of the new revision two. Okay. So after the release of Pitcat and the rushed R1 release, there were still fixes desired for Pitcat. The screen roll was reduced in R1 but not eliminated. It only approximated the number of scan lines to sync to, a first order of approximation. Never approximate scan lines. <laughs> the screen would still roll during screen transitions, password entry, and sometimes during gameplay. Jamtax and Andrew David reported the rare gameplay screen roll. Considering that there were no free bytes left in Pitcat ROM, and that I had already been optimizing the code previously, I decided it would be very difficult or near impossible to implement a way to reduce screen roll. I moved on and began working on a new game. Ooh, a new game, you say? Ooh, very interesting. Two months had passed and we were getting into the thick of the new game. It's a completely different concept compared to Pitcat. Ooh. It required learning of new coding techniques and optimizing the game's kernel considerably. I was learning advanced ways of programming the 6502. Luckily, there's lots of amazing examples and teachers and people to help you out in the forums. The colored floor shows which player has been selected. Oh. Oh, the line at the bottom. Um, where was I? The core of the game was, uh, was working okay. It was at this point Jamtex urged me to try and fix Pitcat screen roll so the game could be finally released. It could be then be more appealing and hopefully reach a larger, larger audience. I reluctantly gave it a quick crack and made the version which again, which finally approximated the number of scan lines during game loads during screen transitions. Quite, played quite well on my digital TV and in Stella, I was expecting Jamtex would like it. To my, dis my disappointment, he still complained that the screen roll was still noticeable on his CRT setup. He set a goal to eliminate the screen roll completely. I continued to develop the game for a few month, few more weeks, and in the back of my mind was considering how to free more space in the PitCat ROM. This was going to be the only path to implement roll-free screen transitions in PitCat. 
I just had an idea how to stop screen roll. Using the T1024T timer in the Riot chip in order to allow a chunk of time to do processing without needing to write the screen, initiate a precise screen sync soon after. But ROM space was the roadblock. Jam Tex urged me one more time to try again. I decided I would then go about creating go about creating some free space in the PitCat ROM. First, they picked up the startup code and reduced a lot of unnecessary setting of variables and replaced timing NOP instructions with some load instructions. I had done this in the new game code and savings followed back into PitCat. <laughs> Signing off. I'm glad to see the stream back. Good to see PitCat again. Oh, people are getting bored. There's a lot more to read. But we may skip some of this and go on to the next game. Oh yeah, it's a lot of code implement optimization talking. Okay, we're going to skip right to the end. A big shout out to Zero Page Humber and the host, James Tanya Darcy. <gasps> and Erlen, thanks for featuring PitCat on the show. Shout outs to the Stella team for the incredible Atari 2600 emulator. It's so good. It is Shout out to the uh, Andre Witchman for TIA Tracker. Thanks to all the playtesters in the Atari Age forums. Thanks for the great feedback. Thank you to anyone else I may have forgotten. Finally, thank you to Yutaka Isokawa for making such an amazing game. 30 years later, it's still loved and appreciated. Um, so, we're going to do the um, speed run. Oh, it's all black and white. Just to show off the speed run quickly to show how that works and it continues time over time into uh, levels. Ciao! Just in time. Okay, so if you can do uh, an outcode, Darcy. Mm -hmm. Go to outcode. 5W2JJX. Wave, wave, wave. Everybody. Oh, you have to click. Focus, ah. your, focus your typing. 5W, 2, J, J, X. Yes, that'll good. stay on the screen nicely. Okay, so we're going to do the speed run and see how that looks. Okay, holding select when the game power is on. So go to it. Hit cat. Now don't start it yet. Uh, holding select. Okay. Now. It said that before. No, oh, that's a different sound. Oh, the it, sound it, might be different. Because it, it played the Atari. Oh. Did, 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 did. Okay, start. Play one. And this will be easier. <laughs> oh, oh. Five, six seconds. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, speed run. It says speed run at the top. And then it automatically. Like you didn't press anything, did you? Mm -hmm. Did you go to level two? Oh, I did. To pick the person. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess you get to pick the person? Don't press anything yet when okay. you're on the main screen. Because before the speed run automatically started. Can you go up and down? Nope. Oh, uh, okay. So you can only pick the person. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Because it used to just automatically go, I thought. Pauses the timer in the menu. Uh, funny your code was in the chat before you discovered it on screen. Oh, that's... Wow. Well, that's a lot of delay. That's a lot wow. of lag. <laughs> oh, well. To the people out there, it doesn't matter too much, but I guess it shows it on the screen. That's really funny. So, and see, it continues your timer when you're... Like, it didn't start at zero. <clears throat> Move right difficulty switch to A. Oh. What does that do? <laughs> Somebody's mad. <laughs> oh, that oh. makes it so it automatically starts. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I have all the instructions here, which I printed. Well, it's a lot quicker to play these when you don't have to think at all. <laughs> 51, you're still under a minute total for but, four Like I said, four you don't levels. have to think. Oh, see, I... I have to think a little bit. 
a tiny bit this time. Yeah. It's a mistake to think. <laughs> Don't think, just do. Uh -oh. oh no! no. There's Come one, back. one, one lesson to learn in this level. It's... Is about the rock and don't trap yourself. Try the left difficulty switch. Does it? Does it automatically? Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Ah! <laughs> well, we'll do it on the next next level. Does it automatically mirror it? No, it doesn't. I mean, we wouldn't know. I mean, unless we went back to level one. Let's let's go back. To no. Level one. No. No! <laughs> I can't actually. I can't do anything. Can you go down to select? No, no. it's like speed run. You're locked into speed run. It says mirror now. Oh, okay. Did it mirror it? Yeah. Okay. So there we go. We test out the mirror mode. Hooray! <laughs> no! <laughs> Marco Johannes. <laughs> and it keeps your time too. So you can do mirror mode and reset. So if you reset the level you're on, does it continue? Oh no! I was, I was. Oh wait. So wait a second. Okay. So we're at two o two. Yeah. So if I reset it and play again, no, <laughs> can't cheat. It's a continuous play time. So even if you reset the level, you're still you're still there. That's cool. That's really really good. Very, very smart. Okay. We're going to move on to the next game. Oh. Uh, should I let you finish this level? Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Pacha! Karate okay. kick! Da, da, da. Okay. Next game. How's the poll doing? Not big enough. More. What is so it? A new poll? Fifty-two percent said uh, they their collections are not big enough. Ah. Uh, fifty-two point two. But it's done now, right? Oh, like it's it said, poll finished. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in second place is too big. Their collections are too big. Thirty percent. Thirty point four percent. That's not surprising because the difference between too much and more is like there's an overlap. You reach too much <laughs> while you're still in more mode. Otherwise, you would never get there. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't. There isn't. Big. I want more, but I have too much right now. Yeah, you have I too have much. Both. You have too much. Even for you, you have too much, but you haven't realized it yet. You're still in more mode, and <laughs> that's how you more. get into more mode. Yeah. You would have if you were extremely organized and rational about things. You would reach. You would reach balance in between <laughs> but that's not a human thing no it's that's not. a robot thing i want a bigger house <laughs> that's the, that's the solution no. that i'm looking at but i can't you can i'm telling you no yeah port alberni new <laughs> vacation home and or mudge island uh, there's yeah. some uh nice uh, homes on mudge island on the waterfront yeah i like the city too much what can i I'm say i'm not saying oh, he just he's not listening both. Store it. You have both. No, I don't want to you travel. You have your vacation home. It's not even traveling. It's just a quick hop across the pond. <laughs> it's, it's not even like the pond, like the Atlantic, the traditional pond. And in third place, just right, I'm done collecting. So there's very few people who are very happy. And all go collection. there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody just plays binaries. Oh, yeah. You can visit it. Make sure it's all there. Yeah. Good. I'll store Broadcast my kayaks there. there. Story kayaks. <laughs> Wet kayaks all over the the games no i'll leave them outside <clears throat> okay good <laughs> okay next game is shadow reflex I keep trying to find people to move to one of these islands near me but Fails i'm finding no time. no no takers so far first time in atari 2600 speed run yeah i have never heard of one before but usually i am corrected whenever i say i've never seen this before it's like oh no it was done and you it's have seen done. it <laughs> and I've seen it. Usually seen that's it. You're true. just dumb. Yeah. It's probably been done like anything that keeps track of time over multiple levels could be considered a speed run. And whether you're not you see that timer, pro does that count? Because people do speed runs with and put in their own timer. Is the 
here's the thing I didn't get because I was I was so intent on winning. <laughs> yeah. Is it counting down or is it just high score timer as in how far can you get in the least amount of time or is it get this far the least amount of time or punishment? <laughs> it's whatever you want it to be. Uh, but, but but the game doesn't enforce punishment on you. No. You have to enforce the own. Oh, I didn't do it all within three minutes. I no, yeah, you. Okay. It's your own enforcement. It, it's a continuous up counter. So theoretically, it's about getting to level X, level ninety nine, yeah. and then posting your score mm -hmm. and going, I got it in two hours or however. Yeah. But I, I'm sure it's much easier if you do a full run through and then do it again because then you memorize yeah, the levels. Once you memorize the levels, yeah. Yeah. Which. That's how speedruns go. Like, people aren't doing it for the first time. Okay, load up speed. Uh, Shadow Reflex is by MCP90, who's in the chat with us. Thank you so Shadow much. Shadow Reflex, did you say? Uh, Shadow Reflex. Don't load it just yet. I'm getting the game cover ready. There we go. Okay, load her up. Uh, this was... Go for it. Loaded, uh, this was posted uh, first on September 13th, 2020. And this build is from October 14th. So, two days ago. Is that bird flying? Or is it a ship that's turning back and forth? Ship turning back and forth. That's the enemy. Uh, this is a 4K game. Or uh, someone rowing on a boat. Could be. <laughs> we'll see what the game's about. Shadow Reflex could be about rowing. Uh, you could make a rowing game with multiple people and have the Quad Tari. And have four people rowing back and forth, destroying their joysticks. <laughs> that would be awesome. Or I, in in one of the summer games, it wasn't about how fast you could do the rowing. It was, it was timing, about timing, yeah. Yeah. the precise, perfect timing of the rowing. Because yeah. in a rowboat, you don't go, because you're just going to be splashing water. It's about how I far. You could do it that way. That'd be a great rowing game. Great game. There, free game idea. <laughs> that, free the game idea. Hard part's done now. You just have to make the game. Uh, uh, Jam Tech says, complete all the rounds in the quickest time. So, all the rounds, 99. Hello, MCP90. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so, you can download this in the Atari Age forums. Uh, go for it. Um, see if you can figure out what to do. Shoot the enemy. Shoot it. Shoot it. And you're done. 75 points. It's auto fire, so that will help you. Oh, I see. You don't have to press the button. It's quite fast auto. Oh, it's always no. You, you have to hold. You hold you it. do have to hold the button. Yeah, hold the button. Not auto auto fire, but auto fire. <laughs> um, this is my work in progress game and first ever too. Shadow reflex. The goal is simple: do as many points as you can before de getting destroyed by the cl drone. Not clone. Current plan features are: get back some health after a certain amount of points, which he has implemented, or by collecting a random appearing item. There it is. You get health from that. Uh, different difficulties based on game speed and triggering by the score. A more erratic and engaging enemy drone movement. General game ah. refinements. Ah. Graphic sounds. Is there any sounds? Yeah, there's a bit of sounds. Oh. I think I got nine. Somehow I got 900 on one of my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one versus one mode. Ooh, yes, please. Uh, and a PAL-60 version. And this... So far, my only complaint is that when the alien thing smashes into you, you blow up, but it doesn't. <laughs> it has better... It's ramming you with its shield. It's very strong shield. So it has shield offenses and also bullets that somehow get through that shield at the same time. But it also has a weak shield to your bullets. No, it doesn't. You're shooting it. Well, you can't yeah, destroy it. Yeah, it doesn't die. <laughs> that's true. It's just playing with me. Yeah, that's the old change log. We'll get to the new one. Um, the latest release, uh, this one posted on Wednesday, two days ago. After four hits to the player, an energy pill will appear orbiting the enemy drone. There it is. There's your energy. Get it. Oh, ah, uh. 900 again, though. <laughs> Um, Which is uh, probably a terrible score, but it's really <laughs> high for me. It's your high so far. Watch out, the drone will still try and get you. Uh, added a difficulty. Oh. Uh, best score! Highest score, look! 1050. You're on hard scores. You're on the most extreme setting. Because oh. they've made a switch to A. 
Jam tax. Anyways, the, I got a thousand points because I moved away from it as it was speeding up, and it was just like, uh, like the game only lasted. Found. Yeah, I figured that out earlier, trying to get multiple shots in yeah. close. But this was like the accidental, like <laughs> ah, run away, but you and did it, same time. it got me. But the great I'm thing just about saying, I beat the other score I was raving about again, which I accept is probably terrible, <laughs> but this is a slightly less terrible score, and that's what matters. Um, the good, the cool thing about this game is you automatically reverse sides. Yeah, I do like that yeah. a lot. So you don't have to reposition your ship. It's just always... It's because there's only one enemy, right? You don't have to shoot at multiple things. Don't blame me. Read the manual first before playing games. Uh, Got to blame somebody. I usually blame the cats, but they weren't... Oh, this is not blame. This is just comments. <laughs> oh, it's all comments. It's, it's not blame. It's not negativity. <laughs> it's just random comments. Um, so the difficulty switches. This is normal mode now. BB. Uh, AB is hard. BA is very hard. And AA is, is extreme, which you were playing at first. But you haven't beat your high score yet. Oh! Destroyed your high score. 1875! <laughs> I mean, you're screwed when you get in that mode. What do you do? Do you turn off the... Do you stop shooting? Is that it? You can get out of it. Okay. You can get out of it. I'll show you when I play. Yeah, that's probably... Uh, it's what hard, I was though. That's probably it's, it. It's, it's like, very dangerous, though, to do that maneuver. I, well, that, I mean, I didn't so much do a maneuver <laughs> as, you know... Get into a difficult... Accidentally spot. find myself in the uh, murder murder mode. <laughs> Both of us murder burger mode. <laughs> I, I love the way ah! it, it changes modes of attack when it's close to you. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, you're close. I'm going to yeah. go real fast and attack you. It reminds me, remember I was talking about in Dungeon Game? When, uh, yeah. is, is Dungeon Game, where the goblins were going to be, like, afraid of you, but then if you accidentally got close to several of them at the same time, they would go crazy and attack you. Yes. They they got strength in numbers. Yeah, <laughs> they got they got brave with numbers. Brave setting, brave level. No, oh, it's out. I probably this needs to be plugged in. Yeah, it probably affected your gameplay a little bit <laughs> by you dying. Yeah, I I. Uh, I'm there he not says sure. diagonals are your friends to avoid ramming. Although yes is sometimes very difficult. <sighs> yep. <clears throat> when in ramming mode, the drone will change sprite and color to warn the player about the danger. Yeah, I don't think it can move vertically when it's in RAM. Oh, it did. Mm -hmm. uh, minor color changes and remove the flashy boot screen. Known issues in this build. Sometimes the enemy drone will get stuck near the player. And rarely the drone will do a very difficult to avoid ramming maneuver. Mm. Whoa! 36.75, quitting. <laughs> high, <laughs> high score. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a minor screen roll when you restart, though. Like, you can see it flip. Oops. Oh, yeah, there's no scorekeeper right now. See, it's... You can't be too close to it. But you can't be too far away. You can you... be too close to it. And if you are, you die. <laughs> ah! Oh, my God. I don't it's know how so... you're supposed to get that red cube. That's just... That's just a tease. Like I've gotten it once, but it's so hard. Oh, I got it once, too. And then I swallowed a giant ball of light, red, of <laughs> yellow light. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah! It's happening. It's moving to the right. Ah! I need that. Ah! I got it and died. Yeah, that's what happened to me. <laughs> that's the problem. It's, uh... Super dangerous. Ah! What do, you, what do you think about having a moment of invul invincibility after you get hit? Or do you like the way it... It seems fair right now. I mean, like, like, they, like they said, you know, like that is maybe not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like... Ugh. Because it can of take away so all matter. of your energy right in one go if you get too close to it, right? I mean, I'm not good at a game like that, but uh, it seems like 
uh, fair. <sighs> like, you can get good at it, and once you get good at it, you'll be good at it. Yeah. If, I don't know. Because it seems like either you're alive or you're dead, almost. It Very rarely, it'll just glance you and leave you alive. But I'm doing, like, I mean, it would totally, dangerous maneuvers. If so. the charge... If the charge was such that it would charge at you and and do a certain amount of significant damage and then retreat, then it would make it uh, at this point of like no skill level. It would make it feel like less uh, instant death. Like That's I, true. It, it took me a while to realize that I had hit points. Is is actually you were talking about healing and. I hadn't realized up to that point that I had hit points. So I thought it was like, he touches me, I die. I didn't realize <laughs> oh. I could even recover from it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was so so fatal to, to get close to it. You know what? I'm complaining about the multi-hit, but you only get that multi-hit if you're close to him. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to do I'm trying to do that. But he he's blasting you with um Bullets. Like, yeah. no, he is blasting you with bullets, but it's like him touching you damages you. Yes. Yeah. It just he so happens maybe to if do it over the and damage, over. Maybe if the the um, number of attacks that it does was not infinite, uh, like, <laughs> that would be better. Like two or yeah. like one a second instead of like five a second or whatever. I don't know what it is. Right. But it might make. That maneuver where you get tons of points too but easy. The, but uh, MCV90 says the you get the the dot and you get full health. Oh god! So, so it doesn't hard to heal you a bit; it heals you to full. Oh, okay, that's very fair then. Which uh, it is just all the more reason to avoid trying to do it because it's just <laughs> an even better carrot. <laughs> <laughs> it is a big carrot to try and get. And I appreciate the fact that it it's got a huge hook on it. allows you to move up and down a little bit faster than him. So you can't just replicate. Is it? Because you went up to the top and he... When he's oh, fast. Oh, normally. When he's fast, he's the same speed as you. I because think. you can't follow him. Like when he's moving up and down, you can't just follow and, and yeah. take him when out. When he's moving fast, he goes to your speed. But the rest of the time, you move quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes it... That's what makes it like a game is that you're like... I think the charge thing, though. I think the point of the charge thing is you're not supposed to get charged. <laughs> no, I think you're not. I think maybe the no rule needs to be made about the charging at all, because <sighs> you're just not supposed to be that dumb. No, I mean it's a good way to. Oh, I got him stuck. I could have. Um... Yeah, it's funny. I'm saying he just said what I said. The strategy <laughs> is to like stay away and shoot him. But it's so oh! slow. Oh, <laughs> points! It's so slow. Mostly, I just don't have the ability to initially to to you know do that <laughs> but there's there is plenty of room to accomplish that though there's plenty of you can stay away from it. like it's it's yeah you're you are essentially getting close uh ah, he follows you though it's very dangerous yeah like, i don't think i actually don't think there's anything wrong or needs to be changed with the charge no. Uh, except for the the fact that you you should be able to get out of it somehow, and there is you that can. there is that thing that happens where you literally can't. Like when he gets that close, unless stopping. I don't think it's the shooting that does it. I think it's just the di distance. So. What would be nice, I think, my only suggestion for this, is that there's some goal where you can actually defeat this incarnation of the enemy. Like, he has hit points. Yep, and yeah, that then, would be cool. And then it would go on, and then you destroy him, and it would go on to the same type of guy, but just tougher, and he moves faster, maybe? You know? Yes, whatever, Something yeah. like that. I need that. I need it. Ah! Give it to me! Ah! <laughs> the truth is, you don't really need it. You'd have way more points if you were just trying to kill him. True. I still haven't beaten you. I think yours was 3,000. Uh, 
You have to be a certain distance away. Or he, he says going diagonals you. will do it. I felt like when mm. the, the diagonal, like it followed me on the diagonal. It does work, but you have to be a distance away from it. Like if you're that far away from it, it's fine. But if you're that close, you're going to die. Go on. An, is going on an angle slower like than that. going straight away? Because ah. that's not normal, is it? Normally, like you go on an angle, you go just as far away. Oh. So if you go yes. on an angle when he's chasing you, you will... The question is, will he follow you? I felt like he was following you. Angles are faster. Times, but, but if that's not true, then that... Up and down is faster straight. than left and right. So that's where the angles come into play. He's going to chase you horizontally, but then you yeah. outmaneuver him by going vertically. So really... The goal is to get really good at that by trying to lure him. Ah, trying to catch him on the. Oh, oh what, what happened there? That's a bug. He's, he oh, okay. he knows about it. Oh, that's the bug he was talking about. Where if you get it in the exact right spot, he doesn't move. Yeah, he gets stuck. It's, it's an interesting game of. Yes, I want big scores, but to achieve that, it's so dangerous to do it. Yep, James got it. You can avoid going diagonal if you have fast reaction. Yep, can't do that. There. <laughs> He's so magnetic. I think, actually, what would... Um, uh. It would benefit from this you not getting that boost of points by by being up close oh. like that because it makes it it makes it like like i got I like my, it. my my I, I think i have the highest score we've had and you're not arguably objectively a much better player than i am <laughs> and i got it in a split second <laughs> Uh, the right split second, right? Right. And so, because you can get points that way, it, it means it makes it about doing it that way. If that and if that's not the point, then um, making it so that you don't get more points by being up close, or not as many more. You know, like not so much that it's worth it. I don't know. I I think it's I just a nice... have ideas, and sometimes I tell people them. <laughs> this is one of those times. I like the nice <laughs> risk reward. Factor. I like it too, but what I'm saying is it's it's it is defining your version of this game. <laughs> it is defining it. And the reason it is is yes, that when is. you don't play that way, it like you've not even come close to the score that I got accidentally getting it that way. <laughs> very true. Right? Very, very true. Because you get it you can get like in one burst you can get 2, so many points. You yeah. can get maybe two thousand if you do it right. Yeah. I don't mean make it nothing like, you know, maybe you get you get good points, you know, twice as quick or I don't know, whatever. It's just infinitely quicker. <laughs> Not really, of course, but sometimes you can dodge him, but sometimes you like that. I did diagonal, but I couldn't. He was he followed me, but that time I could. I think, I think when it's, it's I think when he's close enough to you. That one see, was he followed far. you that time. That one was pretty far. Yeah, that time it followed you on the angle. Mm. But sometimes it doesn't. That's yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. So it's dangerous. Like, you sh you can't do it all the time because you will guaranteed be die to die. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way you can figure out why he's doing diagonals sometimes and sometimes not. Hmm. Oh, you can get higher scores. Today I made 30,000, but maybe I'd take advantage of my mini custom arcade stick I built. Well, we're playing with an arcade stick. Ah! Thrust is saying, um, start evading at the middle of the screen. So get them at that end. Go here and start evading oh. in the middle. Of, start evading sooner. Okay, I'll try that. It's hard to catch him at the beginning, though. Because he goes, he bounces around. I'm not sure if you can tell, but we think the gameplay is good. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about whether or not the ramming was a problem. Yeah. If there's we skipped like, right past the fact that like it's like the gameplay is solid. Oh, 100% solid. Yeah. 
It looks like the most simplest of games. It's it just, followed you that time. It's a bouncing billiard ball, and you're shooting at it. Like uh, so many games like this have been made, but it's that extra little bit of logic he's put in that that following logic. That one was almost all the way across the screen, but I didn't evade him starting at the middle. But it's almost instantly he starts. Yeah, sometimes it does follow you on the on the angle and the diagonal, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Actually, it almost seems like it's when you go straight up instead of on an angle. That's when you get away. Mm. I don't. Look at that. I'm gonna it try. It so quick that I. Yeah, that it didn't work that time. I'm gonna try just moving up in. So you went on an angle there, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm doing right away is angles, and it always follows if I'm moving up. So let's try it moving back and then up, and I think he gets stuck. He does. Ah, uh, nope. I did purely back that time and then... It's so random. That's interesting. If you... If you catch him... Oh, you missed it. <laughs> but I'll be able to replicate it. Oh, he says, yep, going backwards is not the best solution either because you will still be in range of the attack. Going towards the drone in the diagonals is the trick. Did you, did you hear that? So it's like going to go towards it on a diagonal is the, is the trick. Going back on a diagonal, it'll, it can still oh, follow you. Okay. But going towards it, like... Hmm. Hmm. I mean, going back and on a diagonal does work for you sometimes, so I get why you're doing it. But I've figured out some other thing. It's hard to do. But you go the opposite direction as him, turn around, and he gets stuck sometimes. Ugh. Of course he's firing at you. But I'm trying to make... See? I'm trying to get it. Yeah, this is not legit. Oh, got it. Yes! <laughs> it does not count. It counts! It it's not part count. of the game. No. No. I'm beat his score. What did he get? 30,000? <laughs> yeah, this, this does not count. Not legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> I found a bug. <laughs> By the way. Well, well it's you the bug to... that they talked about. So it doesn't... It's like you you found the bug that they already, they already know? found. Oh. Yeah. Do this all Just day. 50. Just want to go to 50. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Exploiter. But that may help him um, understand how it happens. Oh, it happened again? Yeah. I need help. Give me the help. I have to be in a bit different. Oh, it's not in every position. You have to run into oh, it in those yeah, positions. Yeah. That's why it's so hard to get. Oh, did I get it? No, I started over. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get in that spot, though. <laughs> yeah, that's very cheaty. But I was trying to do another a different maneuver of going around him and then him chasing me. But he doesn't chase you. He just stops, which is not what you want. I mean, it's, it's a bug, but let's see if I can get that thing. Ugh, so hard. Well, I never got it stuck so much. Best testers ever. <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> get hurt now that little thing should show up there we go so there is a spot <laughs> now it should show up in a few seconds it's very interesting it doesn't show up instantly after you go down there's like a little delay it's after nice you go down from what um when you lose enough health oh that's it when it says, comes up it comes up but it doesn't come up instantly uh, it like it seems i mean like, that makes sense because otherwise you might actually heal you as you're being rammed ah uh, yes smart smart programming <laughs> anyway that's that's a ton of fun 
Um, and I think I would be able to find out some different maneuvers once he's fixed that bug by going around close to him and he follows or not follows you and get and rack up points that way. But uh, great, great, great game. That's why I wanted to put it on the show today. Lots of fun. Um, the next one, you definitely need instructions, but I'm going to get you playing it and see if you can figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, okay. It's called Chalk and Duster. And I, th and I like featuring um, games that aren't obvious right away, that they're really, really, really fun and it'll have, have a lot of game depth to them. It's like somebody may pick up that game or look at gameplay and go, oh, you're just shooting a thing bouncing around? A million Batari Basic games have made, been made about that. It's very dark, isn't it? How, how do you start it? Oh, I've already started it? Yes, you have. Oh, you figured out more than I did reading the instructions. I had to read the instructions to figure out that. Okay, welcome. This is by Glenn Main. This was uh, released on October 10th as a fully done game. He, he's not a beta testing. There's no work in progress. So this is a chalkboard that you're seeing, the green. It's very dark. Why is it so dark? It needs to brighten up the colors. Brighten up everything. Very, very dark. So it's a chalkboard. I swear it wasn't this dark on um, I, Stella. The only thing I could figure out that I was doing was trying to not get hit by that black square. I'm just going to load it up in Stella. Because that's really, really dark. Yeah, oh, that's a lot brighter. Yeah, what the hell? Here, I'll show you guys. Like, look how look how bright that is. There's a video underneath. And chat. <laughs> ah! Grab my mouse. So, there you can see, it's like super bright. Oh, maybe because we haven't started the game? I don't know. Let's see. No? No, because I was... It dark that's really weird none of the other games were like that why is it this one hmm let's load it up again like this is fine oh, it's just dark okay I don't know what you're supposed to do, though. I know you're trying to not hit the black thing with the white so thing. Dark. No, there's no black and white difficulty. Doesn't do anything. I mean, it's a bit, seems a bit brighter. That's really weird. Like, the last game wasn't dark like this. Can you guys see that okay? That's terrible. Really weird. Let me just see something. I'm just going to pause for a second. Not for us, but for you guys. Uh, do we have any filters on? Nothing that would do that. Hmm. I can't figure it out. It's dark, but it, but you can see it. Okay. Well, we'll continue on with this because I, I like doing it on real hardware. It's it's dark for us. It's not the stream. It's it's something to do with it being run on a real system. Possibly. I'm gonna investigate that. Let's go back to the emulation. I'll switch you guys over to the emulation and see if I can emulate the problem. Uh, going in developer mode. No. 
Nope. <laughs> no, it's still bright. That's really weird. Yeah, everything's turned on. Developer settings. Debug colors? Oh, not debug colors. What am I talking about? <laughs> we don't want debug colors. That's not going to help us do anything. I don't know. Unyet known sync problem. Maybe Stella's too bright? Stella looks like normal. Like, let's... Like, just looking at the last... Did you check the switches? You did check. Yeah, I just flipped all the switches. Let's go back to the last game. Which... What was it called? <clears throat> Shadow. Shadow. Shadow Reflex. And we're going to load up the last game in the uh, 2600 as well. <clears throat> no. Wrong menu. I know it's a bit delayed over there. Up. You can see it there now. Okay. This, this, uh, what everybody's seeing right now on their screen is actual hardware. And now they're seeing... Which the, is a little brighter. Which, but not significantly. It's more like washed out rather than bright. Yeah. And that's just a little bit of settings. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like, what the hell? It's so dark. No. Yeah, yeah. So it's something with that game <laughs> and the system. He may not have tested it yet on a real system. But that's super, super, super weird. <clears throat> anyway, we'll continue with the dark mode on real system because I like using the real system um, for things exactly like this. So I will definitely message him if he doesn't see the show about this weirdness. So go for it. <clears throat> so it's fine. Maybe I'll artificially boost it up for now. But it won't actually boost up for us. So, oh, it's terrible. Uh, it's really bugging me. I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. Okay. Welcome to Chalk and Duster, the most recent entrant in the rapidly increasing genre of Chalk and Duster games for your Atari 2600. There are a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> you are a piece of light chalk, attempting to reshade a board of drawings. These continuously faded by duster. So that's the, the, the little brush is scrubbing off the, uh, the drawings. They're actually of cars. Uh, the top one is a Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG 6x6, 2015, <laughs> as you can tell. The second row is a 1981 Trabant two-stroke. Uh, third one down is a 1977 Toyota Land Cruiser BJ40. And the bottom one is a 2011 Mitsubishi Fuso Fighter 9-ton. It's like three dots. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Obviously, there's a good sense of humor here. Um, so I'm going to jump to how to, well, actually, uh, uh, you're a piece of light chalk, which at the bottom, you're going back and forth, attempting to reshade a board of drawings. These continuously faded by duster are a remorseless adversary who will stop at nothing, except maybe a disappointing code bug I've yet to discover. We may have found it. What's that? Oh, this huh. dark weirdness. Yeah. Uh, anyway, get hit and you'll lose a piece. That's the adversarial part. part. Lose three pieces and it's curtains. Chocolate curtains. <laughs> Duster also wins any game by moving left to right across great most drawings. Uh, you'll know these kind as they don't exhibit any banding. To figure out how close Duster is to winning, note the frame which progressively fills on the front panel diagram below, which you guys have to... Seems to be getting brighter. No? Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting used to it. The other way light chalk can lose is becoming worn down. After becoming short, you'll wear down again to nothing. So has the game started? Yeah, it has. Uh, control the light chalk via joystick up, down, left when on the board, and button. Living on the ledge. 
Located directly below the board is a ledge. Yes, I'm going to keep with this capitalizing thing. Comprising of two lanes, which you zoom along. Hi, Pixel. Left to right, light chalk is opposed by dark chalk. You knew this was coming, but did you know it's actually a game of chicken? Dark has one move up its sleeve. Choose when to swap lanes once per screen pass. Now, do you hold your lane or do you swerve? Light chalk can swap over and over again, bouncing between lanes. And it is bouncy and it is bouncy as releasing down on the joystick springs the chalk back up. Oh, yep, that's where I was sitting. Hi. Kitten. Cats always go to where you're sitting. Because it's warm. And they love the warmness. The Land Cruiser looks like a Land Rover. He's probably using colors that are too dark. He's probably developing using Stella only, most likely. To be honest, my 2600 Junior Pal has always been darker than Stella emulated. Maybe Stella's too bright? Yet, yeah, unknown sync problem. Oh, there's a pixel. Cat. Um, wrapping into unhidden... Uh, after many passes through your chalk, shortens regardless of shade. As a short piece of chalk, you're fractions away from losing the piece altogether. Uh, when you've had enough of the ledge, hit or hold down the joystick button to fling onto the board. If you're hitting the button kind of player, time it so that your chalk is beneath the engagement line, which is on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. on the ledge. Otherwise, just hold until the chalk makes it to this area. So you can hold down the button mm -hmm. and it'll jump up. Um, and it'll automatically relocate you. The engagement line. On the board is the engagement line, which is either amber or green. So it's amber there. There's one green above. Amber signifies your chalk is not the brightest. You may still go ahead and use chalk, but know that it won't get any points. Why is it at all then? It may save your drawing be from becoming too gray, therefore be de denying Duster its progress. And he should add, you press the button to restart. So they're all bright and you actually colored it darker. <laughs> so don't, there, that might help, but it's about the same color. So you have to brighten it up. And I made it darker. Oh, yeah, you hit that black one and it resets completely there you go there oh, what oh you got green yeah and that black does res what is happening are you pressing the button before it finishes or something i don't know what are you supposed to do i don't know you just go to the hold left it there and then you go to the left oh you got hit by that no it just Dust doesn't do anything <laughs> hmm uh, you may want to run across the, because it did work once. Similar duster cannot gain advantage by rubbing along the chalk flex, but can still wipe out your chalk. It can, of course, fade the flex via controlling row. Remorseless, I'm telling you. If the engagement line is green, this signifies all is well with your brightness, and you may proceed to the drawing above to potentially score. Scoring is located in the top left. Zero, one. Uh... my spot uh, uh, which is also the current line on the top right of the screen is the vertical gasser group indicating how many chalk pieces remain okay they progress can you stop destroying the couch come over here come over here i can't i can't stop i just can't i'm, I'm a cat I'm I'm golden a line couch. situation above the engagement is the golden line this is a score doubling bonus declared which row should be brightened. As expected, this bonus is only applied when you've scored, meaning the golden line is no advantage. <laughs> uh, and I've lost my spot. Uh, to any reshading other than the brightest. Oh, what? Rely on the engagement line to help out uh, you out with this. Oh, what? Okay. How does that work? The gold situation bunch. So there's a green line. It's called the golden line. Scoring bonus. Bonus is only applied. Yeah, color that one. There we go. Now it's working. Um, 
Observations. Light chalk, as brightest, can choose to go across the same row each time, collecting points, even if that row is already fully bright. Sacrificial chalk. You're rewarded due points on a row, even if the duster gets you mid-draw. As levels progress, duster becomes more efficient. Duster quickens. Levels 4, 8, 16, 32. All the lovely numbers you'd expect. Board color alternates. Uh, chalk auto re-lengthens. Game over is declared through good game. GG. Uh, located in the game state panel. Restart. It says that even if it wasn't. <laughs> even if you get zero. Yeah. Reset to start a new game, which is annoying. You have to get up. Let me try. Yep. Ah! Getting destroyed. That's why you... Okay. Now I'm... Ugh. Okay. Well, you have to use it, I guess. Ah! And the thing is, you have to make it all the way... There we go. And I'm bright. It didn't do anything. Because uh, you were on the orange line. You have to be above the... Oh when, the when the line is orange, yeah, you have to go... Uh-oh. Someone is naughty. Naughty cat. Oh, <laughs> now my chalk's small. Oh, and your chalk is so grapes. small. Ugh. Yeah, and you go up to the line that you want to color. Uh, and oh, the bottom one is never changes for me. So I reset. Know. So I don't die right away. Because it starts instantly and crashes you into the black. Yep. Kitten. You gotta go. You're all over the things that I don't like you being over, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to get me. <laughs> uh. There we go. So I have to go up one. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it, it colors the bottom two ones. That's very interesting. Okay, so let's go to the top. That worked. Maybe it colors the two bottom ones at the same time? Uh. <laughs> what is the black line supposed to be? Uh, another piece of chalk, I guess. A black chalk? Here. Where am I reading from? Uh, I don't know. All the instructions for this game. Hey, there we go. Yay. Ooh. Yeah, the, the... That colors the bottom two rows at the same time. Which is... Not expected. I think you 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 were done. Oh, I'm done. I, oh, I thought you were gonna look and see what it was called. called that little that guy. Oh, okay. It's one, two, four. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there are five rows. And the bottom one doesn't seem to do anything. So you always have to move up one. And you can't go down when you're on the top, which is weird that it would restrict you. Let's go up to the black. Is that one? Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Ah. 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 Oh, there we go. Let's go to the top. Oh, level two. Yay! Oh, where am I? It's gotten even darker. You're at the side there. Oh, I'm up. Oh, I don't want to color any of these. So the bottom black chalk resets at the end. It always goes to the top, so you know that. Oh, I got hit by the duster. Oh, just missed it. It's 
So you can't run into that. There we go. And it's filling up the bars in the top right hand corner as you progress. And I got them filled up. Oh, bastard. <laughs> like that, you can't win that. <laughs> when he changes lanes exactly at where you are. It's just, ooh, these are very dark. There we go. Did I make it? No, no. I died. Very cool. You understand now? I already understood. Oh, okay. No? No more for you. It does do those bottom two when you do that here. Mm hmm. It's weird. It's, it's very like, strange. It, maybe it does all the ones below, uh, but not the ones with the dusters on. Oh. No. Or no. all the ones below, so long as the dusters above you? <laughs> all I know is that sometimes. Maybe. Let's do go that down one there. One. Yeah, quick. No. no. So it does it individually, unless it's the bottom row, in which it does it both. Ugh. So, so if I do this one, it'll do two of them. Which is fine, as long as you know that, but it's weird. I think there's a mistake. I think, I think there's an error there. Ah. Uh, you have a dark row at the top there. Yeah, I that. guess that's still better than... Better than nothing. Still helpful. That wasn't good enough for you? Yeah, that one's good enough. Oh, oh, black. Get out of the way. There we go. One more, and I think I go up a level. Or, it's scored by points, so I guess the more brighter you make it. Oh. The more plus brighter. More plus brighter. <laughs> the more plus points. Uh want him to move out of the way and the controls in the top are very weird oh that didn't work yeah i don't uh, think the bottom row does anything it's never you. done anything ever coconut 81 for subscribing you see the little animation of pixel yeah wagging his tail <laughs> tail wagon that doesn't yeah there's an error for sure you know the bottom row is 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 uh no bueno no bueno at all But I think there's five positions. Good game. Is that the score? What's the score? Because it's... Oh, it's kind of level plus score is the score. So that's the level. Level one. And then almost to the top. Yeah. Reminds me of sweeping broom and alley cat and keeping it busy. Pixel's making plans, I warned you. <laughs> oh yeah, he's always thinking. So it's a very unique game. That's for sure. But I think there's some bugs. And I want to point out one in the top again here. So one, ugh, one, two, three, four, five positions. And you have to press down to go to the bottom. Like you can quickly go to the bottom by pressing down, which is fine. He, he opted to not go up and down. Like mm -hmm. if you go up, down just goes right to the bottom. I guess that's his tactic. But there's, that one should color that one. That one should color that one. That should color that one. That should color that one. Am I counting these wrong? One, two, three, four. Five. Oh, there's five. There's five rows. But I think this is a mistake. The bottom one should make that white. Oops, well, I died. But, but it doesn't. No. And when you go to the row above it, it does both of it them. It does both. Which I for sure has to be a mistake because it wasn't in the manual saying yeah it's clearly uh yeah. wacky yeah so i think that's the only bug i can find in, in this but other than that it is what it is mm -hmm. and it's a very interesting concept i've definitely never seen that before and it kind of gives it a nice 3d effect with that um yeah yeah the the, the brown the lighter brown gives it almost yeah, like, like the a paneling yeah. shelf look with paneling and the green um, oh, and the bug of it being abysmally dark <laughs> is... It's dark. It's, it is strangely dark, but it's not, like, unplayably dark. It doesn't no. actually impact the playing. Splendid, I just checked the chalkboard colored. It's 
B0, very dark. Okay, so it is. But on Stella, it looks fine. Yeah. So there's some something else going on besides... Does the amber line move up and down? The amber line does not. No. The green does. Wait a second, look at that. I thought I saw it break for a second when I was resetting. But maybe not. I don't know what that green... What's funny is that it's even darker on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> a slight bit darker. Yeah. yeah. What is that green line moving? Oh, power? Oh, doubler. Uh, that's the multiplier. Uh, so when you press the button, it stops. So I'll get a little bit. Quite a bit of multiplier. Oh, it filled it up almost to the top. Oh, that's another part that you want to take uh, notice of. So it's at three. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it said that was a multiplier, so you want to kind of time it up. So it's at the top, which it is now. Hmm. Very, very cool. I like it. It's very challenging, though. And I like that it's kind of two, two games in one. Um with a lot of stuff. Does amber line move up and down? Yeah, on CRT, the zero shades are really dark. Oh, B0. Because it's like, the first one's color, and the second one is the shading. Right. How The luminosity of it. Okay, so we're going to move on to the last game of the day, which we have played before. It's not a new game, but it's a patch challenge. And I think you've played it before. Astronomer? Yes. Where you're trying to take pictures it's of really stars? Hard. It's, it's really hard. It's really hard. It is actually really hard. Um, as you can tell by the number of points you need, uh, which is uh, 20 <laughs> to get a patch. And I've gotten 11 is my WhatsApp maximum score. Hmm? You have WhatsApp on PC? Yeah, yeah, you can. Hmm. I think, yeah, it's handy. It would be handy. Yeah, it's <laughs> annoying that it... Huh. There you go. We're going to change out to... All right, I'll try paddle, once. Paddle, I think, right? Yes. I think paddle was better. Oh, yes. i got to hold the button. Yeah, see, the colors are totally fine here. Why do you have to hold the button? Because uh, you're taking oh, because your exposure. Of the cloud. You're exposing. And you don't want to have it on when you're in the cloud. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the paddle was better because the joystick moved double sometimes. I think that was it. Oh, oh you got it, though. What if the dark screen is caused by the routine that darkens the drawings on the chalkboard and it only affects real hardware? Could it be that? Not for sure if I get you, but no. <laughs> yeah, there's something. That's a. It's always interesting between real hardware and Stella. When Stella is so... It catches almost everything. Um, and especially in the developer options. So this one's going to have to be like really analyzed, but it's, it's an interesting problem to try and figure out why it's dark on real hardware, but not, oh, that's a tough one. It's just a no. It's just, an, yeah, it's been a, a no completely. I mean, you get like a dot in between like one button press. Oh, it's super no dangerous. Yeah. This is actually a problem with this game. <laughs> oh, the randomness? Oh, the fact that, like, I just had a level that was... Next to impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we played with the paddles on this because you could whip, whip it back all the way to the left again. Oh, the red. Yeah, when you miss a star on the full pass, it takes you down right again quite a bit. You're almost going to make it one. Oh, you got three points. And that's why it's so hard. <laughs> there we go. Which paddle is it? None of the paddles? 
What's happening? Oh, I think I have to switch it. Oh, I paused it. There we go. Now we'll reset it. Okay. There's a bunny. Oh, brown bunny. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> no. I acknowledge that, that was a silly idea. <laughs> it kind of works. Should work. I mean, it's small right now. We have many bunnies. We have a bumper crop of bunnies this year in our yard. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Uh, one of the people that uh, lives nearby and brings their dogs... Maybe the joystick uh, to go for walks has said that they've had a bumper crop of their dogs eating rabbits this year too. Oh boy! <laughs> they have uh, they have whippets. Oh but yeah. They're like bully whippets, so they're like and they hunt bunnies. Super muscular, like crazy muscular. These are like really, really, really fast racing dogs. Anyway, so they're going to be able to catch the bunny. They are murder dogs. Too. <laughs> I mean, they're super nice. They're like so friendly, and I love them. But they are definitely murder dogs. Don't go up, 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 don't go up. Oh my god. Look at the luck I'm getting. I know, that's pretty great. Remember that when later you're <laughs> really <get> mad. <laughs> when I'm not getting, when I'm getting what you are, a star in the clouds 100%. Even there. You, that was very close. That was really close and, and it was like, we were talking about it was being how lucky oh, you were. Oh my god, come on. Ugh. Get. There we go. Oh my god. Maybe paddles aren't the ones that are good? Because they're so fiddly. Come on. Okay, so, ah, can you read out the information for the peoples? You are an astronomer and you are working at a telescope. You are tasked to observe a certain star for your research project. Point your telescope at the star and observe, <laughs> but look out for clouds as they ruin your observations. <laughs> They sure do. They really, like, they're so bad for your observations that they, like, negate previous work. Oh, 100%. They destroy the exposure. <laughs> they destroy it. They, like, destroy everything. Maybe they do. Yeah, oh, they do. The oh, do they? Sure. Oh, yeah. They're reflective. They're bright. Uh, I don't know. They just get in the way. They would make it all cloudy and fuzzy, wouldn't they? If you had a, a cloud in the picture? Maybe not for yeah, the one cloud frame. has to, like, the cloud would block the light, but unless there's a light source to brighten the cloud, which there might be. Well, some of these stars that they're taking a picture of are very distant, right? So they're very, very, very dim. And if you put a bright cloud, which you can see with your eyes... Yeah, but if it's nighttime, you, what can't, you can't see a cloud at night. Oh, my God. You can't see a cloud at night unless you're in the city. That's true. That's but true. also, I admit that I could be completely ignorant, and the magnifications might be so high that blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh oh Did it turn off? It did. You know my password? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to wait. It's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's a drawing password. But I'm not going to stop playing. Come on, 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 come on. Oh, my God. Hurry up. Fast clouds are kind of good. But they come around again, over and over again. Come on. I prefer fast clouds over slow, bunchy clouds. That's what you got on one level. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I mean, the, the clouds I had that one level were, like, purpose-built to, like, ruin the, <laughs> the situation. Just terrible. The worst. Come on. Come this on, come is on, also on. a bad scene, but at least the yeah. timing is... The, the the star and the clouds were perfectly aligned, or very closely <laughs> the aligned. The stars were aligned? Yeah. <laughs> with the clouds. Not with each other. <laughs> <laughs> so how's your arm? Uh, I can almost straighten it. And I can, like, 
almost convincingly straighten it at some points. I can bend it almost the same range that I had before, but it's it feels like I'm stretching it when I do that. But still, like the range of motion is is mostly there, so that's good. I went to physio. Fourteen. I got a high score. Gold star. Gold star in my my progress. She was like. Gold star. You're doing very well. Yeah. Yeah. So, good job, Darcy. Big pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I got 14. Oh my! High score. How about me. I play? How about I try it and see if I can teach you a thing or two about how to play? You show me. Show me up. Astronomer. Show me up. Um. <clears throat> the goals: fill the health bar before the score reaches zero. It scores a timer. You get more time. See, this is ideal. Non-moving cloud and a slow-moving star is awesome. That, those are deadly. The stars at the bottom, because they're only there for a very limited time. Whip. Oh, risky. Risky. Get it. <clears throat> Don't observe clouds. Flip left difficulty A for playing with paddles. Uh, flip the right difficulty switch for extra time on the telescope. Oh. Earn the patch. Extra time. Right difficulty switch for extra time? Game mode 1 gets harder with standard increments. Game mode 2 has more random levels. I think we tried it on game mode 2 and it was not advantageous at all. Oh, you're... Food this art. is the same thing I had before. You're screwed. Oh, there, you can get it low. But you're not going to make it, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, huge time penalty. At least like 15 seconds, I think. He's, uh... These, uh... uh cats telescope at the door. Uh, groups are not... Like, they're like, no, you're wasting your time <laughs> on that... Telescope. Other people are more serious. They're gonna get. The, they're gonna get the job done. Quit taking pictures of they're clouds. They're gonna get your hours. Sorry. That's right. It's like if you produce good work, they're like, hey, yeah, you can have some more time on it. You're you're getting good stars. Uh... Um. Earn the patch today. The box version of Astronomer came out October twenty first, two thousand eighteen. Um. To celebrate we have a released a patch then anyone can win not anyone <laughs> only some people like this is a very limited list of people who've won this patch uh if you have a cart or the boxed edition then shipping is free otherwise you need to pay a small fee for shipping the patch comes with a special letter to win you need a score of 20 in any game mode and send in a screenshot to the email in the flyer feel free to post them here so let's see current patch holders of which there are six six people have earned this patch it shows you how hard this is um alex 22 chuck bremer 20 great offender 23 okay i'm gonna try game his e46 s ramirez 2008 28 oh, track md 69 s ramirez was cheering me on today about the patch saying you can do it you can get it i'm like i don't think so what level try. do you need to get it 20 20 i got 14 which beat my 11 i was doing very getting a good run. md got 69 <laughs> i know i wow. don't know how a lot of luck no i bet it was entirely skill well there's skill but there's a lot of luck in this game like like just just like what like this it's crap. It's garbage. Look at that. Yep. I can't... Can I get it down here? Ugh, barely. Oh my god. I can't go any lower. Why doesn't this telescope go lower? <laughs> Ugh. Pointless. Should just reset. Look at that. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 cloud. Stay away. That's pointless. Look at that. I'm almost dead. Two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is the level where it's not random. 
Because this is the same one I got last time. Just one cloud to start with. And it was two. Yeah. We're still talking about the brightness. <laughs> the thing, Nathan, is that it's only the one game that was dark. Yeah. The other games are all normal. <laughs> we tested the other games, and, and it was just the uh, chalk... Chalk and Duster. Chalk and Duster uh, game that was really dark. It's the first time that's ever happened. Yeah. And the same game uh, wasn't dark in Stella. I yeah. guess you already knew that. Yeah. He's a smart boy. <laughs> I think he... Did he... I thought he had just come in. Way or something. Oh no, he he was talking about. It. Well, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Um, I thought he's here from the beginning. He was here earlier for sure. Maybe it was uh, someone else who had popped in part way. Mm. No, this is still random. I haven't gotten the same exact patterns. So. Oh. Fast moving clouds going to disrupt. No. No, can I make it? No, no, ah! Yeah, you touch the cloud, it's over. Mm -hmm. It's just over, you have to start over again. It's game over, man. Yeah. Get it where you can. Your second counts. Ah! Yeah, he was gone for a few hours and just got back. Oh, okay. So he was. He needed a bit more information to be filled in. Oh, yeah. The green bar is dark here, too. It's dark on our screen, too, it's though. It's pretty dark. Flippin' heck. What did I get? Um, Seven. The thing is, we, nah. um, back to the other one. we switched... Um, it looks pretty we, much the we, same. We switched back and forth between two games... And like the dark, the the green bar here might be dark as well, but it isn't the same issue that was happening with the chalk and yeah. duster. It was and we switched between chalk and duster in the game before, and like the one before, exactly the colors you would expect. Everything was bright, and then chalk and duster was just dark again, dark, and, dark, but dark. not in not Stella. Stella. Yeah, because yeah, we had Stella on the screen and the VCS on the screen going back and forth. You'll be able to see it in the replay. It says you should uh, load up the uh, color test ROMs. That show the oh, entire us? palette. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give this a couple more runs. I go 14. I'm switching back to the other mode, which is I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. It says there's differences, but Uh, typical switch A for playing with paddles, B for joystick, flip the right difficulty switch for extra time on the telescope. Game mode 2 gets harder with standard increments. Game mode 2... Game mode 1 gets harder with standard increments. Game mode 2 has more random levels. Mm. I think we tried game mode 2 last time and it just was too hard. Like, they just threw many too, too many hard ones in. Because they're random. Yeah. Random! <laughs> I'd rather have standard increments <laughs> and getting harder because it I made it to 14 on game mode a stop flipping out I, think I need to grease up these paddles ah, ah, ah. how far apart are these clouds uh, pretty far I think I can make it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Ah, nope. Too risky. Oh, <laughs> I needed one millisecond more. <laughs> Thanks. How do you tell what level you're on? You don't. You just have to... When you count. die, you find out? Yeah, right at the end. Not enough room on the screen. Or they didn't want to sacrifice any room. These three clouds are the worst. At least they're fast moving. Ooh, oh, good. Could have got a bit more.
more in there. Yeah, this is much easier than the other game mode. It doesn't matter if you hit the cloud at the beginning, right? Do you, I don't know, because I think you start off with a tiny bit of green. I'll have to check. I know hitting a cloud goes right down to zero. Mm -hmm. but I'll check on the next level where you start with a tiny bit of green. You might. I like the one cloud. <laughs> Just one cloud. Ugh, well, never mind for that check. We'll check it on the next level. I think I did see something. Yeah, a little bit of green. Yet. I mean, because otherwise, what consequence? What consequence would there be if uh, the new level started and there was a cloud directly in your way, randomly yeah. appearing out of nowhere, uh, <laughs> no fault of your own, in no That's way right. representing how the reality? Is. I mean, that would be fair. Yeah, there was some green. Yeah. So hitting a cloud right away. So you want to let off the gas as soon as you finish the level if you realize it but the way you realize you finish the level is that a new cloud shows up in your stream right <laughs> yes so. and, it's, and it's instant instant yeah. Yeah. fudge fudge mm. but you get that first bar back almost instantly by touching it i think this one's not going well not going well at least they're moving a little bit of speed with a little bit of speed Triple close slow clouds are definitely the worst of all of them. Warning. <laughs> Just got a little buzz there. Not a big buzz, a little one. Come on. Uh, my time. My time. Thank you to Muddy Funster for resubscribing. What's how many months? 16 months. Long term. Long term subscriber. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Medium moving cloud. Oh, they're pretty fast. 30 seconds. It's going to be close. Come on. Not going to get a high score. Not going to get 20. Time's too low. Unless I get a good run of easy, easy ones in a row. But this mode is it gets progressively harder. But I haven't seen it. Like, some of these levels are hard, easier than others. Whoop. Oh, I ran out? Yeah. 15. You ran out. 15. Pretty good. If you hadn't run out then, you would have only needed to finish <laughs> five more. <laughs> That's it? Four more. Do you want to take another run at no. it? No. Before I do no, my last go. ones? You do it. If I don't, it's a whole skill set that I, I would need like I would need like real time to just even get into like it not being a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> <laughs> so the house is still a little bit in disarray, um, but it's not too bad. We've got unloaded most of the boxes, but our walk-in closet part of the closet is not done like the shelving and stuff, so we can't put anything away. So there's still a lot of rented boxes we have, but we have to get rid of those eventually because they're still charging us $20 a week for the boxes we have. They're great boxes. They're massive and huge. Um, but I'd rather not pay $20. But Are they plastic? Yep, they're like hard plastic bins. Mm. Oh my God. Um... So now we've we put in the order for the shelving for our um, walk-in closet. Mm -hmm. So we know the spacing now. So we can buy some bins. I'm not going to bother. Oh, terrible. Medium moving clouds. Oh, my God. Maybe I should have bothered. Damn it. Ugh. There we go. Um... Come on. Oh my god. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh no, a bad one. <laughs> this is part of the difficulty rating of this game. Is uh, I'm going to do your maneuver. Because <laughs> there's no in-between. It's just so fast that uh, it didn't even have in-between parts. Come on. Fuck! 
Judge. <laughs> oh my god. It wasn't a massive waste, but it was enough. Ooh, that was close. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I destroyed my one bar of green. It does take time to get it back, too. Yeah. It's not nothing. It's, no. not, it's not a ton, but it's not nothing. Yeah. Renting boxes. Oh, they're great. Like, rather than having cardboard boxes that kind of collapse and can't stack and you're, they can get wet or whatever, you can rent uh, hard plastic boxes, like big it's ones. like frog boxes? Is yeah, that... there's a ton of them. Ours are gorilla, yeah. but there's also frog and a bunch of animals. <laughs> um, and they're super sturdy and they're super big and they're stackable. And they just drop them off, and they pick them up after you're done with them. Come on, come on! Oh my god, that guy was moving fast. Hurry, get into the... Get into the... Oh. What's happening? Um, I was way too far left on my path. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I have to find where the beginning of the movement is. Yeah, yeah. Ah! See, unfair. Unfair. But everybody's playing the same game, so... Everybody's they're not. That's actually not true. They're, that's why it's unfair. It's because they're literally not playing the same game. True, the randomness. <laughs> yeah, it's not set out levels that everybody's playing. The clouds appear in different... Like that! It was right on my I beam. Know. It's basically the only way for it to happen. <laughs> it happens an awful lot. <laughs> it does happen. Way too much. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on! Oh my god, that was so close. Okay, this one's not too bad. It started fairly early in the sky. Still got lots of time. Would it be cheaper to buy some rubber made mints? Mm. Not a twenty dollars. No, it depends I on had how many. Weeks. Five of them. And they're like a a month. they're more than twenty bucks each. Yeah. I mean maybe like you guys in the US have much cheaper products than we do in Canada. For certain things. For certain anyways. things. And like consumables like bins I, I would say fall under that category oh. ah but anyway it is cheaper and I don't want to buy all those bins because I don't have anywhere to put them I just have to throw them away or sell them afterwards and I have to transport them from the store 25 of them of which my car does not hold 25 um and i've been make multiple trips it's just really really convenient it's great if you don't have a use for the boxes later yeah. and when you need a lot of them it's cheaper than buying like, these are big big boxes and we had 25 full yeah yeah does uh -oh. warn you does warn you 20 seconds I may complete this one, but I'm probably not going to complete the next one unless it's really easy. Oh, come on. Oh, and I got rid of my bonus green bar. Come on. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> and I'm not going to make this one. No. Maybe. Maybe, but probably not. Three, two, one. No. 18! 18! 18! 18! 18! Damn you! I am increasing, so that means I'm going to play one more until I stop increasing, which means there's only two games left. <laughs> A lot of the, the penalties I got was from um, getting rid of my gr first little green bar. Yeah. Like, that wasted time. Oh, time <laughs> five seconds some amount of time any and the sun starting very left in the sky seems like a good thing because you have lots of time to grab it but when it's out of the range of your telescope yeah it doesn't help it's it's like you're just waiting sitting there doing nothing oh my god <laughs> so frustrating um, the thing about the the joystick versus uh, paddle yeah. is that the joystick 
Come on, isn't come. as quick for zooming across the screen. No, it's not. But for inching along, it actually works really well. Yeah. Like you just nudge it and it just moves. It's like I had the most success I've had. But you don't have as much like absolute control over it. No. Like you can't do that. No. Nope. You can't which do I, that, which, that's for sure. Which Oh. Forget it. <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> Doesn't count. It was sort of early in the game. Yeah. It does start off in the exact same uh, level. That's right. I was just going to... Oh, Pack Rat beat me to it, but I was just going to say... What do you say? Rage quit. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, nope. Oh. This is... Oh, I think I wasted too much time. Drexel just subscribed. Hey, finally went through. Did you do that? Finally, it finally clicked. It finally After two hours? <laughs> After one more. No, it's three o'clock now. We started, yeah, three hours. Three hours it took. Because I did it to before, because I saw the hype thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was going to wait. I wanted to wait until about now to do it. So it's a little screen. while, so it'd be on the screen. Might maybe till Tuesday. <laughs> The stream doesn't run until Tuesday. No, 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 no. Like, it stays. Like, it says latest subscriber. Like, oh. newest subscriber. If nobody subscribes after you, it'll be on Tuesday's stream, too. Oh, I see. But that's doubtful. I know. Everybody's renewing their, their subscriptions now that we're back in the air. Thank you, everyone. But there, I just anyways, used the flip. I did it to do the to get on the, the oh, yeah, hype train, right. because I don't know what it is, but I wanted to be on the hype train. Oh, I wanted to be part of the hype train, right? Train. Yep. So it's funny that it took three hours for it to click in. <laughs> Precise movement with the joystick, especially a short throw. Oh, are you saying, S. Ramirez, that you use the joystick for this game? Then I will do one more game with the joystick. Yep, do it. Because it just screwed me again. Yeah, it was, do it. It was a low... You don't need to convince us. I think you're just trying to convince yourself. I am. I think an elastic band would hold this on real good because there's oh. a gap for it. See, like it has something to loop onto. Oh, mm, yeah. Is there space for it? Screws would do it too. I mean, sure. <laughs> oh, did I crash it? Oh no, that's a pause. Wrong, wrong switch. It says you died. When twenty six hundred games crash, they don't do that. It says you died. I did. What are you bad. waiting for? Oh, I see. I thought you had to reset. Oh, maybe this is better. Oh, this is much more precise. Ugh. You have to get used to just tapping it, but once you get yeah. used to it, it is better for that. Yeah, that's true. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like small. the other one is definitely more satisfying in oh. some ways. Yeah, because um, I would have whipped back to the left for that and got it a little bit quicker. Yeah. Oh, well, this is much more precise. Yeah. But I won't get that whipping. Yep. Maybe it doesn't matter as much as this. Oh, F you. Yeah, I gotta say though that the um, the thing where the clouds teleport into your beam, that's it just shouldn't be that way. That's no, it should give like a a second way. of reprieve or something. Let's say before you. Start. Or yeah, yeah. Or something. it turns off your beam and you something. have to press the button again. Should be something. Right? See, I lost a bit of time over a paddle for that one, but. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know which one's better because uh, the oh. paddle is definitely better for big movements. It's sort of like a trackball. Yes. Um, yeah. Like, I use the TrackMan trackball with the thumb on my computer, and I've used it basically since it came out. <laughs> Forever. And it is infinitely better than a mouse for all the things <laughs> that it's better than a mouse on. Preach on. Uh, a few things... Yep. Like, it's not as... It's way quicker. Like, if, if you want to move quick, it is, you just spin that sucker and it goes... Zoo! Like, it's, it's, it's amazing. And you don't have to move your hand around. So if you want to use it, like, somewhere portable, you can just stick it on the side of your head and you're fine. Like, you don't need space <laughs> for a true. mouse. You can use it anywhere. Anywhere that you have, like... You can put it on your knee, whatever. It's, it's amazing. 
huge um, bonuses. But it takes for practice. It takes practice to use it for pre precision. Right. In fact, when you first get it, like say Photoshop, it takes a little bit of time to fig to to get good at putting it over the X to close a window. Mm. Like it's like in a way because you're used to the mouse where you just know how to do it, right? Yeah. Um, Tamara has used it for, I don't know how I convinced her to use it. I, I, <laughs> you I, did? She's using it now? She's been using it for as long as I, as long as I, I can't remember. Wow. I cannot remember a time she wasn't using it. Oh, okay. Long time. Um, it may have been because of the store. Because mm. I put it in the store and that's the one we had in the store. <laughs> you everybody, you. <laughs> everybody who works at the store has to learn how to use it. Which, it is just better. It, like I don't think anybody would disagree with me. You got a countertop that's covered in stuff. There's limited space. There's oh always God. limited space. And then you, um, and then you. Uh... No. Should I do one more? Anyways. Uh... You do it. One more. Anyways. Ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's like that though. That the the precision is different. Like. Yeah. Um, it's a learned thing, but. I'm pretty sure people who play first-person shooters oh, God, use a God. mouse for sniping. Yeah. But if you're not sniping, then the I think the TrackMan is is pretty solid. Like you can when you want to turn around, you just you just knock your fun your your thumb sideways and spin around. It's it's very like. Do you have to pick up your thumb and move it back again, or can you cover the full screen with a? Oh. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to. First of all, you can adjust the acceleration, so you have control over that, right? Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> but uh, the new one has... You know how uh, there's a resolution button on mice yeah. for games? The new one has that, too, so oh, you can actually... Okay. Uh, More precise movement. I'm just telling you, if you haven't used... If you haven't used a TrackMan, the one with the, on the thumb, the one on the finger is just, from my perspective, insane. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would ever do that. It's so bonkers. <laughs> Maybe that's just because I'm I was used to a mouse before this, and this uses the same finger buttons as you do for a mouse. Cats, Psst. stop it! Oh, I hate when you're like two milliseconds away from completing it. And you're too scared to you to get it because of the clouds there. Yeah, this is more precise, for sure. Oh my god! No, 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 no! Oh good, the clouds are in a good spot. So I still have 115. That's really good. Nice. Uh, but that's bad. Yeah. Good timing with the cloud. Nice. Ah. It's because the the what they used for the beam. Oh, only a warning. Um, it's chunky. If it wasn't so chunky, it would be. You don't have to deal with like little yeah, ed yeah. edgy things. Yeah. Nice fast fast single cloud. I'll take that all day long. Fast double cloud. Sure, take that too. Ah, go! Get out of here! Yeah, still retaining my time pretty well. This may be it. This may be the run. Ooh, I'm actually increasing time. Wow. Damn it! FPS games the mouse does not like mouse acceleration. They want direct mouse input. Well, mm. like the trackball is direct. It's it's uh, when I say I don't mean yeah. A mouse has acceleration. You're choosing like what speed. It yeah. might go nice and and smooth and what have you, but I mean it's like an upside down bat mall and uh, it's, ball. The mouse. thing about the TrackMan uh, is that it is it is it feels very familiar. It's just like a mouse. It's just that yeah. you're moving your thumb instead of the whole uh, the whole thing. It just takes practice, like anything. Come on. Come on, come on, come 
I mean, like even Scotty, he's a pretty smart guy, but he was all like, hello, computer. <laughs> Picked up the mouse and spoke into yeah. it. <laughs> Uh, and Mr. Mr. Denham did that too, I believe, in uh, IT Crowd. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> well, we thought he was dumber than we thought uh, oh. Scotty was. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, he's pretty dumb, that character. <laughs> Computer! <laughs> <laughs> but smart enough to be the head of the company. Or not the head. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, the he runs the whole thing. Well, he was yeah. he's the owner of it, yeah. yeah. And then, until he jumped out the window. <laughs> Defenstrated himself. Can you defenstrate yourself? Can you throw, you're throwing your own self out the window, so I guess so. It usually takes somebody else. <laughs> Such a magical word. It's in, like, very single use. <laughs> Like, you can't be thrown out of anything else. Just a window. <laughs> oh, I'm running out of time. Need more time. Need to increase time, not decrease. I don't think your time counts down slower as you go up. Or it gets harder. Like, you have to use the same amount of takes the same amount of time of exposure for every star. Mm. So it technically doesn't get like harder, harder. Just the obstacles are harder. Not the method of capturing. Oh, come on. No. Fast! Move! Move! Faster! Ah, there we go. Yeah, still... Uh, uh. A big gap. It's not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Bit of time. Yeah. Oh, good. Nice slow moving one. One cloud. It's hard to know because you don't know what your your level is. How many you've gotten? Mm -hmm. you keep it in your hand. This is where you This die. is where I die. <laughs> <laughs> Three clouds, moving medium, already down in time, starting off screen. Uh, Mr. Fix, greetings. Greetings, Mr. Fix. Four, three, two, come on. 22! Woo! Da-da-da! Da-da-da! Some other music. Some other non-copyrighted <laughs> music. Oh! Right, I forgot. You get the, the sash of celebration. That's right. If I can remember which way this goes on. Da -da. Sash time. Thank you. Where's the lights? Where's the switch? It's on here somewhere. It's very recessed, <laughs> so it's very hard to find. The patch sash, yes. Oh my god. There we go. Yeah, it's on. Let's do blinking. Blinking. That's how we do it. Turn out the lights. Ah, look, I'm using lefty. <clears throat> Patch achieved. <laughs> 22 out of 20. Good enough. I'm on the scoreboard. Not the lowest on the scoreboard. Uh, uh, now you can have to get the Instamatic camera and take a picture of the screen. Don't use the flash and hold the camera very steady. Okay, he's going to do it. No, it's on the, the screen right there. Oh. Right? The big one. Darcy's doing it right now so we what can... What am I doing? 22. Oh, I see. So Darcy's taking a picture of the screen right now so that we... 28 pictures of it. Okay. <laughs> so we have to send it in and get it developed. Wait, wait. Oh, uh, turn it out. Oh. Does it work? Yeah, now flex. <laughs> We're idiots, but the fun kind. The fun kind of idiots. There we go. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, patch achieved. I have to oh, delete some is, of these, otherwise it won't. Uh, 
<clears throat> I knew you could do it. Welcome to the club. Well, thank you, S. Ramirez. I am very happy to get rid of that patch that was... Now there are seven people. There are seven people now. <laughs> I, I'm proud to, to count myself amongst the top seven astronomer players in the world. <laughs> I am actually very happy to get that patch because it's so hard. As you can see it... Well, I wouldn't say so hard. I'd say medium to hard. Because it took only two serious now he says it's it. medium to hard before he was saying oh my god this is hard i'm never gonna get this one but it was the joystick oh that's that's really cool that's really cool <laughs> actually <laughs> this isn't gonna work oh yo let me switch it over uh i can focus it oh come on phone don't be like that <laughs> don't be like that there we go back a bit. a bit there oh not too far forward there perfect there's <laughs> a bit of lag so yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious there we go oh my goodness that was fun watching you guys oh i'm glad <laughs> it was very difficult uh to, to get so i'm very very happy oh packer vg the person who gives out the patches or at least associated with the patches uh to win you need a score of 20 or more in any game mode to set a screenshot to the email in the flyer um to, uh maybe he gives out the patches i don't know packer do you keep the patches i okay <laughs> doesn't quite answer my question but it's affirmative i guess i i have it i do <laughs> Um, so let me know. I made a note. Send a patch when I can. Oh, thank you very much, Pack Rat. Nice video. Yeah. Color test. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do the color test now. I know it's going to be fairly close. And we'll, we'll put the color test on the screen here. And we'll do it in Stella as well. So I have some demos. Oh, no, these aren't the demos. That's not what I want. I want tests. Uh, palette demo by Splendid Nut. Splendid Nut was in the uh, chat, so I'll use his. How about that one? That's a, That one's a good one. I don't think this has any settings. Is that one good, Thrust? It looks like on, on this screen in front of me, it looks the way that it... I would ex think that it should. Not too bright, like, not too dark. Right? Black is black is black. Black is black, and all the rest you can see. Yeah. I mean, it's a tiny bit darker on the stream, but not much. Yeah. Like the top two. Yeah. I mean, the, it is darker on the stream. Uh, uh, stream. For the sure. the top one over from the left on the top, you can almost see. So it's it's still within decent. Stress is good. Okay. So now we're going to go and put it on uh, Stella. Uh, Test proms. Uh, Same one. Uh, yes, that one. It doesn't look as good. <laughs> it doesn't look as good. Shh. People are in the chat that work on Stella. No, but why doesn't it? That's looks weird, isn't fine. it? No. It looks fine. Does it look? looks as good. The brights are brighter in Stella. It's just blurrier. Oh. Uh, so that's is... Stella right now. And this is the the VCS. Stella. VCS. My, so VCS is a bit darker. Mm -hmm. Um But, and the yeah. the Stella is a bit pastellier, but yeah. it depends on the options too, because yeah, there's yeah. different yeah, the um, settings and... different palettes. And I'm using standard, which I yeah. think, yeah, I was just gonna go check <clears throat> that. There's a standard, a Z26, and a custom. I can switch to the Z26, which is even pastellier, actually. Um, there's nothing else on. Nothing else. Weird. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. So, yes, the VCS is outputting a little bit darker. 
So he could be using the shades that are like in the first column. Like you take a look at the VCS. If he's using the shades in the first or second column, then those are rendering quite a bit darker on my screen. And they are. He and, is, right? You know, so that might explain it. Yeah. Try custom. Okay. Um, is there actually custom custom? Oh, custom. Actually changes it. But I mean, that's whatever it happens to be. Like, you want, maybe I can try match it. Oh, that's a good idea. Does it change it while it's on there? Yeah. Oh, NTSC phase. No, that's just kind of changing the hue. Oh, that's changing the hue, not the darkness. So, if, oh, what was it? Let's go default. Okay, let's go to custom, and then I'm going to try and change the brightness so it matches my system. Oh, it's a little too dark. That's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the brightness that looks like mine. I'll show you guys. Very the close. brown hues are totally off. Wow. The bottom row? Yeah. You guys can totally tell what ste which one is Stella. Cause, uh, maybe I'll change the NTSC phase too. Oh, there we go. That's more like it. That's really close yeah okay I'm really happy with that yeah it's it's really close now we will load up each of the games actually just load it up on here I mean we we it, it seems like that is it because yeah someone already posted that they're using like the lowest shade the darkest shade That's and true. it's the darkest shades that have like yeah those are that are so dark on yours <clears throat> so let's go back to stella and then we're going to be loading uh chalk that's what it is chalk and chalk duster. duster and this should be just brutally dark yep yep okay nothing to do with the game then it's not uh, he i mean he's it's using... to do with the game in that everybody else uses brighter colors yeah and the brighter colors don't seem that dark is your system color calibrated? No, it is not. Um, I should get Erlen over here. He, I, I don't think he owns a color calibrator. I don't think though. that. I don't know if it was brighter before. I don't think it was. it was. Well, actually, uh, Thrust was saying that the green bar on on the astronomy game used to be brighter. Oh, okay. And it was really dark. For the next show, I'll ca I'll calibrate them. At least get it close to what the standard settings of Stella are, which I, I would guess be the acceptable, normal look of what it should be. Because that's what you get when you just run Stella in default mode. That makes a lot of sense now, so I will not complain to him about that. Because <laughs> I will look the fool. No one wants to look the fool. Yeah, that's, that's really dark. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, good. Good. Problem solved. Um, so, next episode, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, next episode, we are going to be play having another world premiere. Uh, ex not, not world premiere, because it's not a premiere. Uh, an exclusive final release, just like today, but this is of Unholy. Uh, we're also going to be playing A Roach in Space 2 uh, for the 7800, which just got released. It's called the Roach in Space 2 Cosmic Bugaloo. Um, and it's a port of his 2600 version. He just released it to yesterday. Uh, a game called Don't Go. Um, an update of Shattered Earth. And then possibly another game. Uh, Unholy's pretty long, so I may limit it to four, four games. Um, and then we are doing a patch attempt the next Friday of Rally Racer because they just put out that they're doing patches for Rally Racer. I have to get uh, either 210 points or 240 points, which looks very, very achievable. Um, the Halloween homebrew special uh, is on the 30th. Um, and we've got Pumpkin Muncher, which is a hack of fast food 
And if anybody other else has some suggestions for other uh, Halloween games, they could be homebrews or they could be hacks as well that I haven't played. Or maybe you like to see it again because we've done two Halloween shows in a row with Halloween games. And then uh, November 27th, Developer Spotlight on John Shampo. Big, big, big show. He has so many games. And we're going to delve way back into the days. We're going to be playing his DOS games that he made. Um, and even earlier that have never been released. And even some DOS games that have never been released, too. Big, big thing. And we have the exclusive world premiere of Gorf Arcade. Which is very, very exciting. A lot of people looking forward to Gorf Arcade. Uh, level C in Boulder Dash gives you nightmares. Okay. Me? <laughs> Make sure Atari Vox is working for Gorf Arcade. It is. And I've got the Atari Vox version 2. It is. Um, I'll make sure I'll test it. Because there's a lot of speech in Gorf Arcade. So that'll be fun. Uh, then we're doing. We're having a holiday homebrew special. We've got Mean Santa, VCS Dreidel, Bite for Before Christmas, and Cold War queued up. We need some more. Um, got a huge special unannounced event. Two of them, as actually, and one of them's huge, and one of them's huge as well. <laughs> They're both massive. They're big. They're big, big, big. Um, and we're going to be playing Dan Kitchen's Gold Rush at some point. I think he's getting pretty close to getting that. I think I read somewhere it's before the end of the year. And then we've got the Atari Homebrew Awards uh, nominee reveals in January. And we're going to play through all the nominations. And then the Atari Awards in February. And I have to set the date for that so that it works for Darcy and Tanya, Marilyn, and all of you. Actually, you Actually, usually it's on a Saturday at noon, so if you're able to stay over the Friday or come on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will work. Awesome. Um, and that's it for now. Garf Arcade at last, yes. Oh, Nathan Storm did speech for it. Awesome. Then I definitely will make sure the Atari box is working for that, which it always, it, it has been working. And let's read out, actually it should be on here. Twitch. Read out the names. Before Super Bowl again? Oh no. Yeah, let's make sure it's not on Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl still happening? Is it the same time of year? But that's very smart of letting me know. I will check all other things happening. Because it was on on the day of Super Bowl. And that was bad. Bad news. <laughs> bad, bad. I mean, the Super Bowl, like, they, what did they think happened? Why did they think that no one was watching? Oh, no. Or maybe Super Bowl's on the developer spotlight. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think some people had both watching. Football in the U.S. is bigger than you ever can imagine. It's inc it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, Thrust26, Mr. Fix, Nathan Strum, Dan ABC. Thank you. Good show. Well, it was a long show. <laughs> And you have put in a vote for good show. Thank you. Uh, S. Ramirez 2008, Pack Rap VG, Mr. Fix, MCP90. Uh, thank you for um, making your game. It was lots of fun. Looking forward to playing it again after some more updates. Uh, Drexall, who put in Rage Reset, <laughs> which I did many times on the Astronomer. Uh, Mark I only posted it once. That's right need more well somebody else posted so made up for two of them marco johannes uh oh and the pitcat 2 is out now pitcat uh release version 2 which might be the last one i didn't find any problems with it yeah uh i mean i thought there were some problems but it turns out that was just me <laughs> alan fur um Tifos. who else has been watching i've been watching zero page homebrew uh, Jam Tax. So thank you for tuning in for our show, for show back after a month. And we'll be back on track Tuesdays and Fridays every week. There's lots of games to play. Um, and thank you, Astronomer Patch. Yep. Surf Bobo is always on Sundays. Well, then it's fine. We're, we're clear. The first Sunday in February. Okay. Well, then maybe we'll be the day before the Super Bowl. That'd be cool. Um, and uh, tune in next week, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 
and uh, we will see you then. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. See you next weeks. time. In two weeks. That I'm here. <laughs> next time. <laughs> I'll go, I won't see you at all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>